What's up? Welcome to the Jess Marshall Podcast. Okay, if you love your dog as much as I love my dog and my dogs in the past, you have got to tune in and you got to turn this one up. I've got Loriston Crockett, founder of The Gift for Life, as well as Geno Stim on the podcast today. And we're going to talk about peptides. What the hell are peptides? You're about to find out. Enjoy. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Jess Marshall Podcast. Wow. There's Mark that, else. Swipe. Bring it. A lot of people are really starting to understand that you are what food, you eat. Yes, and that food is so important. What goes in has a direct correlation to to what yeah, comes out. Your proteins. We don't even know the protein source, right? Um, you're and well, how, just there's, and how there's, there's you like sawdust to, in like I bet there's sawdust in that chewy if, shit. If it comes from uh, China or anything else, it is sawdust. And that's fucking crazy that you give your dog sawdust. <laughs> well, you don't know you, because you look at the beautiful packaging on the outside. And you go, oh, that's that's what my pet's getting. No, right. that's just a show. And, I mean, how would you like to survive? And, and I give everybody a challenge. How would you like to survive on cereal? Awful. For a week. No. How about your whole life? Terrible. Or as I said, if you're going to have to give kibble, because some people can't afford, like I use Nom Nom with, with Max. Now, of course, that is an 11-year-old dog. Wow. He only has a little bit of silver right here. Look at how uh, bright his eyes are. Too. Oh, he runs like the wind. That's awesome. And uh, I mean, so Max is not aging like other dogs. Yes. When uh, wins. I mean, when you- and we talk about aging too. You know, people they look at me and they say, "Okay, Crockett, you're 63 years old." I say, sure. Am I? Now yeah. I've been on this earth <clears throat> enough days to say I'm 63 years old. But on the cellular level, am I really 63? My doctors say no. I go see my doctors every two years. You know, we go see our urologist and whatever. Right. And they, they say, take your blood, check your levels, all check that. The, do the prostate. We have to do the dance. I right. call it date night with Dr. Huh. Trang. She yeah. just says, Crockett, get out of here. Um, but the thing about it is, is that she said, you have one of the smallest prostates I've ever seen. I said, as long as you're not talking about anything else, we're good. Yeah, and yeah, we, yeah. She has to laugh. She goes, something's wrong with you. I said, I know I have fun with life. <laughs> but um, I, again, she says, you're not aging. But you have to ask. I mean, I'm in the gym working out with 25 year old dudes, 25, 26, you know, girls that are that are uh, um, 23, 24, 25, 26, because I'm a biomechanic specialist. They come over and want an adjustment. I don't mind helping anybody. I don't train people anymore as a living, but I don't mind passing on the knowledge. Yeah. And what I tell them is I said, the only thing I ask is if I give you this knowledge that you pass it on for Ah, free, pay it forward. Yeah. And if you'll do that, I said, that's a cool thing. That's awesome. And just uh, remember me. Yeah, no doubt. You know what I mean? And yeah. So we have a blast think, up there. I think that's um, that's a really cool thing about experience. Like Albert Einstein said, experience is knowledge. Right. Everything else is just information. <clears throat> There's so much fucking information. Like you go on the internet, you go on social media, you want to look up dog nutrition, peptides, whatever. You don't know what's what from what. No. But then when someone meets you in person and they realize the depth of knowledge you have, the depth of experience you have, and you're able to pass that along. And, and you, I tell people- That's look, how you make look, changes look, in the world. Yeah, and look at a trainer. Yeah. Look at them, and they will teach you what they look like. I said, you know, so I'm 63, I'm having children, but people want to argue with me that I'm 63. Look, I'm an old surfer. I've been out in the sun my whole life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. but still, it's like I'm out there rocking it every day. And then let's talk about me coming down with COVID because I'm getting a new certification um, also in Pilates, I saw Sylvester Stallone doing this. I found it extremely interesting. Yeah, I saw that about so- Sly Stallone yeah, too. Yeah, so I started taking uh, Pilates, and I'm going to get their certification. We probably when are we going to start? Um, we'll we'll uh, would you, we just kind of cold open and start? Okay, whenever you're just ready. whenever. But we'll, we'll talk about that too. And then because I was taking a private lesson, my instructor gave me COVID. Really? And she called me and says, Crockett, I feel horrible. I mean, I, I have no energy, blah, blah, blah. So I'll send you some peptides over. Let's talk about antimicrobial host defense peptides, especially since COVID is everywhere right now. And these peptides kill viruses just by touching really? them. Yeah. When did you When did you get COVID? Um, three weeks ago. Really? And, and you know what I did for recovery? What's that? I swam 30 laps a day. I rode my bike three miles, and I walk max. Did you uh, Did you feel any like constriction in your lungs nothing. or fatigue or anything? Nothing, nothing. How did you know you had it? I went, she, I went and got tested. Really? Cause because she called you and said, I have it. You probably have it now, so too. So to be around my 11-year-old and also as a uh, bishop's chaplain and berger in the Episcopal Church, you know, I have to be careful about where I am with people. Sure. And so I just went up the street, got tested. No free testing anymore. It cost me $120. I laughed. Wow. So let's just do it. Two hours later, they said, you're positive. Wow. I said rock and roll. Um, so, again, wasn't lethargic. Nothing, really? con- no congestion. 
um, and just rocked it out. But of course, I've been, and we need to talk about preparing your body. Peptides fight against cancer and tumorous cells. Preparing your body, working out. Peptides prepare your body for recovery, preparing your body. Um, fungus, bacteria, viruses, preparing your immune system. You do this by taking peptides. You're preparing your longevity. You're preparing your body for the fight. Longevity, vitality, wellness, and a lot of this is people taking personal responsibility for their health. And it's so easy. And for and we're going to talk about for their pet's health. Well, as and well. then people don't want to work out. But first, I do. I've got to do is get you feeling good enough that you want to go sure. work out. Sure. If I can't do that, then you're still sitting on the couch behind when, the eight ball. Yeah. But when you start taking the genus and peptide. All of a sudden, your natural energy, it is not a stimulant, but you have natural energy, but you've experienced it. Yeah. But here's the funny part. Stop taking it, and you'll hit a wall. Interesting. Because your endocrine system will slowly start adapting itself to the toxin environment you live in, and then you'll start slowing down, and your endocrine system and your hormone levels will start depleting because the peptides actually create what we call a youthful or useful level of hormones. And hormones, you know, are the life force of the body. No doubt. And I want to get into the science of peptides. Are you from here? You from Dallas, the Dallas area? You know, I, was, you I, was, I was born in Houston and I was here by the time I was three. So I was you can say you're a native Texan. I am a native Texan. I'm actually, uh, yeah, I actually have the Crockett uh, a license plate. And I also have the Alamo painted on the on the front of my house with the state seal of Texas really? because we're, we are Crockett's. That's awesome. Yeah. As in... Davy. Uh, yeah, yeah, as in Davy. That's a lot pretty of people rad, So <laughs> That's pretty rad. It's a funny thing. I never gave it much thought, but a lot of people still seem to still remember. And uh, so, yeah, I remember do. the Alamo, bro. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know the history, but we were brought up with Texas history yeah, in school. Right. I don't know if they do that anymore. The funny part is, is that I do have the Crockett license plate on one of my cars. So it's it's hilarious. Do you have a coonskin cap? I, I don't do that, but we have lots of guns and ammo. There you go. I like that, man. The uh, Your journey to entrepreneurship, because I know you own numerous businesses. You're a very ambitious, driven guy. You obviously pack a punch in terms of energy, right? You're just... you're. This is just me. It's awesome. What you see is what you get. I, I love it. You know, my father taught me a long, long time ago. He said, find a niche and fill it. Hmm. And so I did. You know, I've done that my whole life, whether it was from a fishing technology that I created, um, Halo Light Lures, that was an infomercial that was everywhere uh, back in the uh, in the 90s. Um, back in the 80s, you know, I uh, I worked with the DEA. Really? Yeah. Doing what? Um, well, I was undercover with the DEA. And so we were, I was working in the cocaine field out here, in, actually in Dallas. Um, and so I was working with the DEA and uh, undercover and uh, kind of funny Miami Vice hasn't come out yet you know what I mean yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. anyway so yeah I actually went into that field wow and I uh, saw a lot of things that um, I didn't want to see anymore right you know what I mean and ecstasy was coming on on the line there and I didn't understand ecstasy because you could change a molecule and by doing that um, you know you could be legal one day and legal the next day sure so I just decided it was really time for me to say goodbye I, I did my part to try to get these drugs off the street and uh, because I saw the abuse. And, of course, from there, I actually decided to totally take a, a hard, hard, hard right, left, you know hard, mean, right, hard left, and, yeah. and turn out of it and actually met a, a Franciscan priest. And I started studying under the Franciscans and studied for years and became an Anglican verger and bishop's chaplain, but I was actually becoming a Franciscan monk at the time, too. What uh, what led you to that? Was it seeing all of just the pain, the loss, the suffering that that, the, that, that drug environment was causing the world? I think was, so. I yeah. wanted to turn my life around from, from all the horrors that I saw. Negativity. And, and the greed oh. and, and uh, the non-caring for your fellow man out there. And because of that, I thought, you know what? I really need to pray about it because I started looking in the mirror and I didn't like who I saw. Hmm. Did you grow up? Did you grow up? Boy, were your parents people of faith? You know, not really. Of course, being brought up right here in, in Dallas, we all went to the Baptist church. Yeah. I was baptized in Lockwood Baptist church over on Garland road. There when I go. was uh, 12, 13 years old by Reverend Jackson with the fire and brimstone, buddy, boy, he put the scare in me straight to hell. But man. again, you know, after some of the things that you see and you participate in and the deception and the position you had to play to be that person, 
you kind of want to come back and try to find yourself again. So I, I found it through my faith in Christ. And, uh, and, and I was very lucky to meet Father Ray Ball. Uh, oh my God, two doctorates in theology, uh, voted one of the top 100 scholars of historical theology of this century. He was a diocese exorcist. Wow. So I was trained in spiritual investigation also no uh, kidding. under Father Ray. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How, was, uh, so Leo, we might need to cue up a, a clip from the exorcist for the <laughs> end for our reactions. How, I mean, that's crazy. Uh, yeah. Exorcism. So that's a real, that's a real deal. It is a real deal. Wow. Um, Principalities and powers, right? Principalities and powers, yeah. And, you know, and especially in today's seducing world, we're we're tapping more and more into these sort of things. Uh, If you get on TikTok, uh, I've seen more tarot card readers and I see other people uh, practicing Santeria, which is a voodoo and Catholicism. And and people are just being seduced by this and they don't have an idea really what's going on. So, um, so yeah, I was actually trained in that and I was, of course, trained to disprove everything. My job was not to go and go, oh, here we go. Let's bring the holy water. And then just like the movies, that's not how it works. So my job as an investigator was to actually go out and disprove everything. And only as a last resort, if I couldn't disprove it by any means possible, only then would I present the case to Father Ray, who would present the case to the bishop. And only after getting the bishop's permission were we able to move forward with the next step and see, is there really an oppression of possession or is there any something else manifestation actually taking place? Wow. So, yeah. When you're studying uh, to become, when you're studying for all that, was this an intensive thing? Were you like at a facility studying or were you, did you have a day job and then you were like studying at night or? You, you know, I was so blessed because of the halo light lures. Yeah. I made so much money that I didn't have to work. Gotcha. And then Father Ray took me under his wing. Um, because I was able to tell him about uh, something that I felt in a certain position on the grounds of the church, and apparently there was a black mass there. Wow. I can't make this up. You know what I, mean? I, had, I had no idea. And he asked me, who told you? And I said, who told me what? And I actually took him and I said, here's you know, what's going on here. And, and so he says, okay, so you, you have the gift of empathy and empathic. So he took me under his uh, wing and permission from the bishop and started training me personally. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, so you are living proof of that axiom. You hear a lot in the organized, especially Christian religion. You hear this statement. I do. I grew up in the church. Right. Um, just in church Sunday, Wednesday, church school, but whole the, nine yards. But the church is weak because we won't unite because well, of yes. position and money. But you hear this often. Yeah. So I tried to fill this void with money, with women, with possessions, with fitness, with whatever. And there was still a void. You make all this money sure. from your from your entrepreneurial efforts with the lures. And you're still, do you, would, you, would you say you felt lost coming off of that experience working with the DEA? And, and, well, the DEA, you, know, you, you see a lot of things on the street, a lot of abuse and stuff like that. And it, it just goes against you. In, in the beginning, you're young and you get in the fight and you get recruited. Okay. And you have this idea of how things are really going to be. But when you get out there, there's there's no glory. There's nothing in there that's so glamorous like the Miami Vice shows or stuff like that. It's really hardcore, nasty stuff. And that's life and death things. It's lives just being destroyed. Children being being around that energy alone with, Uh. with these different people. And then you look at them and you still have to remember that's somebody's child, but also the abuse that is spreading because of the drugs and the cocaine and everything and the lives that are ruined um, and the seduction of it all. And there's a spirit on everything. I've told everybody this many, many times. Everything has a spirit on it. And so um, I was in it. Um, I was in a you know, few bus for sure. My last bus was actually uh, right at Love Field, at the Love Field Hotel, which has been torn down since yeah. then. You know, a uh, gentleman decided to bring three kilos of cocaine in from Florida. Area. Yeah. Wow. And uh, we decided that I, you know, it was time to take that down. So yeah, it was three, the last bus. Three, three keys is a that's a that's a bit right there. <laughs> it would, was. would you if you had to go back? Would you would you do it all again? Do you regret the experience, or do you feel like the experience has brought you to where you are now? I, I think life is a journey, uh, and, and I've learned the step by step that by step to where I am today. And I think that's why I'm so passionate about uh, human health and also pet health. Because I've seen the abuse and I still see it going on uh, with, of course, one of the worst drugs out there, alcohol. Uh, alcohol is a drug. Let's talk booze. You you were talking about a buddy of yours 
right when we before we we went on. Yeah, who's uh, comparing himself to you, your age, your vitality? But and he's, he's ten years younger than I am, and and he can't keep up. And you told him, step one, man, we got to get rid of that booze. How bad is booze for people? That, and they just, we don't understand because it's so ingrained, right? We we have booze for every celebration. We have booze for every... The sales pitch. For, it's every occasion calls for booze, right? I'm sad. I drink. I'm happy. I drink. I'm excited. I drink. We're all together. We drink. Well, even in the Bible, the, in the Old Testament, it says, may a man drink beer for the sorrows of his heart. So again, it's a drug and can be used in a certain way for calming or things of that nature. Uh, the first miracle of Christ was turning water into wine. So there's a celebration. The problem is we abuse it. It's a lifestyle. It becomes a lifestyle every day. Don't get me wrong. I'll go out with you today uh, if we're out and, and I'll have a Guinness in one hand, a little Bailey's in the other. And you'll see me have one or two drinks. Boom. I stop because I drink because I don't mind celebrating with you and, and, and having fun with you and talking and stuff like that. But I don't sit there to get drunk. It's not my lifestyle because I know tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'm ready to rock and roll and hit the gym again. And I seriously, six times a week, do a thousand reps and I do it at the gym. I'm doing full body routines uh, as a biomechanics trainer, as a master trainer, as a physical fitness trainer. You know, this has been a way of life for me since I was 13. Uh, back in 82, probably before you were even here, uh, I was one of the first Nautilus trainers in I'm older than I look. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, awesome, man. <laughs> but uh, I was one of the first Nautilus trainers ah, in Florida. So it's always fitness has always been a life uh, style for me. So alcohol, it, uh, another thing you were talking about that I know we're going to get into later when we talk about peptides, how they work, is just how many cells are in the human body. Alcohol really attacks the human body at a cellular level. Well, not only that, not? The, the liver. And yeah. the liver is, so, and we're going to be talking a lot about liver today yeah. for dogs and cats and for us also. But then it's that mindset too. You said in the morning, you know, in the morning, I'm, I got to get up. I got a lifestyle. I'm going to go work out because I know that's, that's, and that that's keeps more me important on track. than me drinking. When people, when you talk to people in your everyday life, because I know you're a master networker, you're always out rubbing elbows with people. You're I've never met a stranger people. in my life. That's yeah. a gift given to me by you, God. I love talking to people. You are a very effervescent personality, but you hear and we hear. More than ever, depression, all-time high. We're coming off of uh, the major sickness, whether it was what it was or not. We, we have opinions about that. Probably won't talk about that today because it just is so controversial. But right. you hear, I'm so depressed. And then you look at the lifestyle and there's alcohol on a daily basis. What does alcohol do to the mind that people might not quite understand? Well, oh my gosh, it's an addiction. And here's the other problem. Is a lot of people have a certain gene that they immediately will uh, you know, go directly for alcohol. It's easy. You can forget about your troubles for a short it's period legal. of time. It, it's, it's as legal as the day is long, and it's been here forever, and if it's, it came oh, out okay, to, it's acceptable. Yeah, it's very culturally acceptable, right? Whereas, you know, you've got your marijuana and things like that have stigma. It's not legal in Texas for recreational use. It's barely legal for but medical. But here's a question. I also, and I don't, I'm not into marijuana. It's yeah. not my thing. Right. Um. But again, I ask people, would you rather deal with somebody who's smoking pot or would you rather deal with an alcoholic every day? You yep. know what I mean? Yep. The only thing with smoking pot is you're going to have to fight is who's going to get to the refrigerator first. Do you? <laughs> yeah, or the pantry. Um, those Cheetos, I, unless, you're, unless you've had a lot of it, maybe you put the Cheetos in the refrigerator. Uh, you can't eat just one Cheeto. If, so. uh, if, if alcohol came out today, right now, mm -hmm. it was introduced to the masses the FDA would say, no way, Jose, would it not? I would probably think so, because it would still be considered a drug. Would it be used for anxiety or whatever? I don't really know. I know it's, it's very harmful also to the family unit. Now, how do I know that? I know that because I was brought up around an alcoholic stepfather. Okay. And I experienced the abuse of, of alcohol. So again, at a very young age, I decided I don't want to be that person. So I started running and I started getting into fitness because it was a way to get me out of the house because you never know who you're coming home to wow. that night when, when you're having to deal with an alcoholic. Do you think that you said that um, when when that man of faith took you under his wing when you started to, to study? Oh, the Padre? Yeah, he was awesome. He that he noticed right away that you were an empath, that you were very empath. Do you think that your upbringing and being up against that adversity where you didn't know what you were going to face coming through the door every night, do you think that had something to do yeah. with you developing kind of that keen intuition, that, that empathy? That is so genius what you just said. I've never 
thought about huh. it that way. I've never given it any thought. And it possibly could be. You've just opened my mind up to something to really start meditating on, pontificate on, because I never thought about it that way. But I had to be prepared every day I came home because, again, I didn't know what I was walking into. You know, it's tough too. probably I was not I, I wasn't faced with that growing up and, and I'm thankful for that. Right. Um, but, you know, that prepared you and, and you saw very in your formative years. Wow. This can really damage not only the person, but the who's family, taking it in, but the family. Right. Um, and that's got that has to, you know, whether you're a person of faith or you just believe in the universe or a higher power or whatever, at a certain point in our lives, at least from what, from my experience, I found that when I realized that everything that's happened to me didn't happen to me, but it happened for me, Mm -hmm. things took a way different shape. Now that takes a lot of mental discipline on a daily basis of not Oh, I was raised by an alcoholic stepfather. My life is going to suck. I'm a victim for the rest of my life. You know, and we talked about your experience with the DEA. When you look back on those negative experiences in your life, and then you look at where you are in your life now, where your main goal, you get to get up every day and work on products that help people and their best friends. That's got to be so fulfilling for you. Well, it, it is, but it also gives me the experience that when I meet people and I see what they're going through, I can reach out to them with compassion because it's not really who they are, but it's where they are right now. So I can still love them, but I don't have to live in their world and experience. I can love them and leading by the way I live my life and hopefully give them an idea going, wow, I can do that too. So we try to inspire that. But without those experiences, I don't think I could. And without those experiences, I may be a real judgmental jerk. Yeah, you know, I I think of this I think of things the same way. Yeah. If everything in my life had gone exactly the way I planned, there's no way in hell I would be able to get on the same level as someone who's really struggling and go, "Brother, right, right. sister, I've been there. I know what you're feeling. Yeah. I've had to fight through that. This is what I did. Take it or leave it. If it helps you like you said before, pass it along." Is that just this this very full life that you've lived, all these different vocations and experiences. Right, right. Um, they they've all kind of come full circle to where now you're a you're a published author. <laughs> right. You're you're a, an entrepreneur. You know, the first time I became aware of you is listening to my favorite radio station here in Dallas, or at least it was before it turned super liberal, the ticket. Um Yeah, we'll have to call give Corby a call and ask yeah. him what the heck, dude. Yeah, and maybe ask Bob, like, huh, thought uh, you know, well, what, we'll go down there. I don't what, mind. We'll, what we'll are get we, us in the door. What are we doing? You know, <laughs> you're never going to change people like that's mind. No, um, no, not at all. You know, I've, I've asked other guests this and I don't like to ask the same boilerplate questions of everyone. But I was looking at a clip that we just dropped with Guy Mezger and I talked Guy's to him, a friend of mine. Unbelievable guy. He's, yeah. he's awesome. Right guy. around the corner from yeah, him, he is his, his, his new spot down there at Beltline. And 75. Yeah, Monster Jim. He's going to come back on and uh, just a very inspiring guy. Huge very, fan. very huge humble. fan. And I talked to him about. You know, cha- making changes, right? Mm-hmm. Like, right. how do we change the world? The world seems just so discombobulated and chaotic now. And maybe it's because we get information so fast. And even 10 years ago, we right. didn't. Do you, when, when you're looking at your life and your approach to making making changes in the world, is do you take that, I'm going to be the change I want to see? Is that the approach you take to your life? You know, it's a very interesting question. I, I don't have the ego to believe that I'm the great changer. What I can do is live my life and try to inspire others and lift them up with love and gratitude that they are in my life. But it still comes back to their choice. But if I can show them there is a better way other than what the world is teaching us every day. Um, and there's just a lot of followers out there. And, you know, when, uh, when Jesus called us sheep, it wasn't a compliment. <laughs> okay. So I, 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 you know, I like to think that I try to lead by the way I live my life. And that's just the best I can do. If you see anything that inspires you, but what I'm doing and how I live my life, then fantastic. You know, come walk with me. Let's walk together. Not behind me, not in front of me. Let's just, just walk together as brothers or sisters and let's have a great time if I can inspire you in any way. And I'm always going to learn something from you too. I learn something from everyone that I meet. And that's the most amazing thing. I don't have that kind of ego to think that I have all the answers, but you can pass something on to me that, uh, you know, we can share together. And, and uh, 
I don't know. See what, yeah. see what tomorrow brings. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's people who, who may be watching or listening to this who, who know, man, I have got to get a handle on my health, right. on my fitness, on my wellness, okay. on my vitality. Is it ever too late to get started? It's never too late. As a matter of fact, um, this last winter, I started um, actually doing something on, on the GenoSim Facebook. And what I was doing was it's something called Walk the Mile. Now, all you have to do, a lot of people say, Crockett, God, but you know, I'm not in the gym like you. I go, I don't expect you to be. And if you come to the gym, I don't expect you to train like me because I've done this for years. Uh, I've had guys with their egos come in there that are 26 years old, and they go, no, I'm going to hang with you. I go, no, 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 don't do this. Please listen to me as, you, as, a, as a trainer. Don't do this. No, I'm with you. I got it. I said, okay, if you don't want to listen and you want to do my routine with me today, I'm warning you not to. But it's your choice. Everything is about a choice. I call him the next day. Hey, dude, we're going to the gym at five today. I can't. I can't move. Walk. I can't move. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we started something um, called Walk the Mile. And if you just got up every day and all you did is just walk one mile, well, pretty soon you're going to be walking a mile and a quarter mm-hmm. and a mile and a half. And I tell people, I say, all right, so tell me. And they never get the answer right. So a man who runs a mile, a man who walks a mile, who burns the most calories? I don't know. I would assume run. No, it's the same. Really? The reason that really is, is because your heart rate may be up higher for a shorter period of time. Okay. But when you're walking, it's up still higher, but for a longer period of time. And also uh, walking, uh, as people start getting older, doesn't put the strain on the joints and the ligaments and things like that. Um, So I tell people, get up and walk and walk every day. And with a month, you'll start dropping weight. The endorphins start kicking in, which is what? You know, I'm all about peptides, a peptide hormone. There's 40 peptide hormones in the body. So we start talking about, well, let's get your body fortified with peptides because the average human being has 37.2 trillion cells. And every cell in your body communicates. Why? Because it has a peptide. So when people go, why don't we know about this? Well, because people don't really want to talk about it. They don't yeah. have the knowledge or they don't have the technology. They want to push their drugs. They want to pr- uh, push their synthetic vitamins, which are horrible. They're made from petroleum products. Most of the time, they're sourced right out of China. Um, and, and they're just poisonous. The, uh, the Walk the Mile program, was that outside? Yeah, I tell you. As you much can, as possible, well, get yeah. that vitamin D. Well, I did, it out, I did it outside to be hardcore to say, even when it's freezing, my big boy, Max, my dog and I, which we walk every night together, and I'm really lucky in my neighborhood. Uh, I say I'm lucky, but an HOA can be a real pain in the rear end. But I do like there's no cars on the street, so we do off-leash training. Max is a therapy dog. But even in the cold, I would go out there and say, if I'm out here doing it every night because I love you and to inspire you, then you can get up and walk also. But you can also head down to your mall. There's plenty of people in the mall right now that are walking and you can meet new people hmm, there you and go. you can get out of that, that depression because this last winter was no fun with COVID and everything else going on and people not going out and wearing their masks. Dark winter, bro. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we're going to head back. Prepare there again. for the Blue dark season winter. is starting, what, another 120 days? You know what yeah. I mean? So get outside and walk. Get those endorphins flowing. You're going to feel great. You're going to sleep better. You're going to burn calories. And you're investing your time. So my motto is always this, and it's been this for years. If you don't have 35 to 45 minutes a day to invest in yourself, yourself, something's wrong with your lifestyle. So you've got to invest in yourself or you're going to have a shorter, harder life. I think a lot of entrepreneurs especially have a hard time with that, what you just said. You've got to break away. Spending time on myself. Right. So this is my experience. Busy always working, always ambitious, right? I got a next goal. I got a next idea, whatever. Very difficult for me to go, you know what? For the next hour, right. leaving the phone in the truck and I'm going to pull this tire or I'm going to push the truck well, or I'm going to back. Let's talk about the phones for a second. Okay. These things are great. Okay. I do business from here all the way to Hong Kong. We sell our gift for life. Oh my God. Hong Kong just bought 5,000 bottles Good of the for gift you, for life, man. you know, That's for the, awesome. the fountain of youth for pets, blah, blah, blah. Right. But this is the most addictive thing we have in the world. Mm. And it is highly addictive. Leave the house without your phone and see what happens. Your cortisol level, the stress hormone is going to rise. They did a study um, of a gentleman and they had his phone and they took it away from him and they started texting him. He could see the phone, but he couldn't get to it. And his cortisol levels went up and they came back down again. Then they took it across the room by the door and he got a phone call. He couldn't get to it. He didn't know who was calling. His cortisol levels went back up again. 
and they started leveling off, and then they took it out of the room. He didn't have it for three hours, and his cortisol level stayed elevated. Cortisol level is a stress hormone. It has many side effects over a period of time. Um, so, yeah, there, it's, it's designed to be addictive. It's designed to take our mind off reality and go into this world right here. Also, it's one of the nastiest Petri plates of disease and bacteria mm. out there because we don't clean these things every day. We don't think about it because it's just become a part of us. So we be, are we the Borg? I don't know. Elon Musk said that basically we are a Borg-like society now. Yeah, he did. Um, I think that the phone is 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 such a tough tough one because it is very addictive. Yeah. Obviously, you know, your serotonin, you get a kick. If you, even if it's a negative text, you still, somebody thought of you and sent you a message. So I want to see who it is. I want to see what it is. And instead of treating the phone like a tool, right? I have a shovel in my garage. Right. When I need to use that shovel to plant a tree, I go get the shovel uh-huh. and I do the job. I use the tool and the tool serves me. But what I find with the phone is if I'm not watching myself and I'm not really dialed in on, it's not phone time right now. It's family time. It's work time. It's podcast time. Then instead of the phone being a tool and me using the phone to improve my life, the phone runs my life. It does. And I mean, let's look at TikTok right now or let's look at social media. I mean, we're doing a podcast, but it's not all we do. And but even on TikTok, I mean, I see people that are just do nothing but copy each other, but Hmm. they want to see how many likes they can get. And that's what their whole life is based on is the likes that does release the serotonin and that does release the endorphins. And that does give them credibility that they really are someone, but it's really, we're living in nothing but a narcissistic society and they will follow and they will go to the next step and the next step, uh, just like the addiction of porn. People get addicted to porn. Well, after you get bored with that, you're going to go to the next level of porn and the next level of porn and the next level of porn. Who knows where you're going to go to? And now that's going to destroy your mind. And Doesn't the same thing hold, hold true with sugar? I mean, sugar <laughs> is so yeah, bad for your brain. Absolutely. And yet it's in absolutely everything. everything. Even your carbohydrates turn the, into sugar. Uh, what's your protocol for the phone? You put that thing in a drawer at like 8 p.m. and don't pull it out till the next morning? or you what's know, I, your? I have to have it with me because I do business. Um, and you have a son. And I do have a son. When I'm with him, it goes away. I put it away. I don't want anything to do with it. When I go into the gym, that, um, so many people, oh, my God, you work out. You understand. When I go to the gym and people are on machines and they're playing with their phone, it's like, dude, seriously? What are we doing? I said, excuse me, how many more sets do you have? And they come out of a hypnotic state. What? I said, how many sets do you have? Have you been on your phone? And I'm, I'm just trying to get my routine. And it's really nice meeting you. You know, I was interested. It's really nice meeting you. He goes, oh, man, I'm sorry. I got two more sets. I said, okay. And I brought them out of that trance. They had no clue what was going on around them because of that phone and their music and the texting and what they're doing and they're taking selfies and what they're doing in the gym. I'm there to train. I'm there to invest in myself. And it sure isn't bringing that thing in there either. And the bad part about it is, is this watch I don't even like very much, Mm. but it keeps all my stats for me. But I turn it off that you cannot communicate with me. You cannot text me. I will not take a phone call or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, it, it, it's so addictive. It's so harmful, but it's just become who we are. The, um, you know, you are what you eat is an axiom that holds very true. And we'll get to, to, time, yeah, yeah. to nutrition in a minute. But you're also what you listen to, mm-hmm. what, what you see and what you watch and then what you say, right? I oh, think yeah. a negative thought, if it comes out of my mouth, I hear it. I think it again. If a thought comes in and I go, nope, wrong, wrong thinking, I'm on to the next deal. Um, how important for you is your what you consume in terms of your entertainment, the music? The, what, do you watch the news, things like that to keep your mind right? Where are you at on that? You know, I am a news guy. I like to keep up with the news. I, I watch Fox News uh, a little bit. I give myself a little bit of every day just to kind of keep up what's going on, what's going on also in the market. It's all Russia's fault. That's all you need to know, bro. <laughs> it's, it's all Russia's, Russia's fault, fault man. brother. Uh, it, it's, it's so hilarious. But um, I, I am very careful. I, I'm an old rock and roll guy. I actually have a rock and roll museum in my home. You have to come over. Yeah, I've seen photos. Uh, yeah, it's pretty so, rad. so we yeah. got, uh, oh my gosh, the Eagles. Let me go through the room real quickly. We've got... Kiss, right? Got I don't kiss. have Kiss. Oh, I, okay. I, I, yeah, I've, I've got that. I've got the zombies. I've got monkeys. ZZ Top, Alice Cooper, Jeff Lynn, Electric Light Orchestra. Um, oh, my God. The Cars. I'm a huge Cars fan. 
and a big Ben Orr fan who was a bass player, sang Drive and stuff Any like that. Any Echo and the Bunny Men in there? I don't have anything like Love that, them. right? Love them. Uh, David Gates and Bread, Genesis, uh, uh, Phil Collins was a big fan of his, uh, Sammy Hagar. His daughter's a remarkable actress now, Phil yeah, Collins. Right, it's right. crazy. It's so, crazy talented. Uh, Meatloaf, which I'm really there was you go. when he just passed I recently. It, I wish he could have gotten a, a handle on his health. Yeah. Uh, nobody make. Nobody made a movie better uh, through a bit role than Meatloaf in Fight Club. He yeah. was amazing yeah. in that movie. Yeah, so a very talented guy. That whole that whole thing of getting a handle on your health. Mm-hmm. I know yeah. it's I know it's a good thing to start when you're when you're young. But again, you know, you got some, maybe some people who've been sitting around for two plus years, right? Because can I go to work? Can I not? Can I leave my house? Can Walk I not? The mile. Yeah, hey, get it a, can start as easy as that. Yeah, or save a life. Go down to your pound. And uh, and adopt a dog. I mean, Max, um, he's absolutely amazing. You rescued Max? I did. He That's came amazing. from the Plano pound. And and I'll tell you a quick story how I believe God works real quickly. I, I don't I can't explain this in any other way. So Samantha, my English Springer. Is that uh, is that Max that's, right yeah, there? That's, oh. Max. <laughs> that's Max. He never leaves my side. He sleeps right beside Got me. Got a bunch of time. black lab in him or he's lab and he's half shepherd. Yeah, he's 110 pounds. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Big yeah. fella. Yeah, Max is uh he's a big boy. And like I said, oh. we do shows sitting right there and when I give uh people some tips. Of course he he loves me in front of the camera. He he's, yeah, he's does a camera he? guy, man. <laughs> but believe it or not, that is an eleven year old dog. And who's gotten peptides wow. his whole life, and he only has a little silver on his chin, which is really amazing because most dogs by seven or eight or seniors are all silvered yeah. out and they're limping. Not that guy; he runs like the wind. He's all muscled up. But uh, but I've got to tell you the story about yeah, Max. Yeah. You want to hear? This is so amazing to me, and I still to this day can't explain it other than it must be a God thing. It has to be. So I just lost my Samantha, who's my English Springer Spaniel, and um, most Springer Spaniels die at 13, 13 and a half. Samantha lived for 17 and a half years, wow. AKC registered, because she got peptides her whole life. And so I lost her. It was finally time just to say goodbye. And um, I'm sitting around my house, and I go, man, here I am, a pet health longevity guy, and I don't have a dog. And I think I'm just going to go up to the pound today, because I've always had Spaniels, and just look around. Okay? So I go up to the Plano, and I'm looking around. How big of a dog was Samantha? Samantha, English Springer Spaniel. Yeah, so about she's how many? About 45, 50 pounds. 45, 50 pounds. Yeah, but okay. man, I, she was awesome. I take her out to White Rock Lake, and she swam out in the middle of the lake until I give her a command and jump up and down where she see my command to come back in. <laughs> she was awesome, man. She won competition, the first competition I put her in for retrieving in the water. Wow. She was just a beautiful, amazing. So you're heartbroken. You lose your best friend. Samantha's gone, and I'm sitting there and going, wow. Um as a single dad, I don't have my child 50-50 at the time. So I'm sitting there going, wow, I, I just, let me just go look. You know what I mean? Because I work with pets every day, but I didn't have a dog in my life. And it just, something wasn't there. And um, so I went to the pound and I'm walking around and I see Max curled up in the corner and our eyes meet. And I went, oh my gosh, look at that beautiful boy. But they put him in there with a pit bull. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a big bully fan. I love uh, pit bulls and American Bulldogs and stuff like that. I absolutely love them. But this was a little jealous one. And when I'm up to the window looking at it, Max, this pit was coming here, but got jealous because I wasn't giving him attention because I'm looking at Max. And it wasn't anything about the pit bull. Like I said, I love the bullies. They're just amazing. Oh, my gosh. And what athletes. But Max and my eyes met. And again, for my spirit, I went, wow, I want to meet that dog. I really do. I, you know, he's he's a mutt, which has now become my favorite breed. Yeah. And so I started looking around, and I couldn't find anybody to help me. And I said, "Well, heck, let me go down the hallway." And of course, usually you can find somebody there to get a dog out and, and show you. I walked down the hallway, couldn't find anybody. Walked down another hallway, I couldn't find anybody. Walked all the way down, couldn't find anybody. Made the corner, was going to come back up to the cage and go up to the front desk. And a couple was walking down the hallway with Max on a leash. Oh, no. And I went, oh, that's okay, as long as he has a good home. And I walked by and said, hey, you guys, you got, that, you got this a dog out there. They go, yeah, yeah, we did. And I go, are you going to take him home? They went, no, he's too big for us. Do you want him? Oh, my. And they handed me the leash. And I, went, I grabbed the leash. I went, <laughs> yeah, I'd like to talk to this dog. So we went out back. And um, Max leaned up against me. We started talking. I go, hey, dude, I got a little boy you're going to have to help me with. You know, we just, he was the sweetest thing. And uh, 
Then something really funny. I walked in. I go, hey, guys, I, I really want this dog. We're going to I'm going to take him. And they said, OK, I said, but I've got to go prepare my home and I've got to make sure he can travel in the truck. I need to go get a kennel for him, a little cage. And they go, well, uh, but I'll go ahead and pay for him now and I'll be back. Well, when do you close? And they said, well, we close in 30 minutes. If you leave, you can't pay for him and somebody else can adopt him. I went, no, no, you don't understand. I want this dog. Yeah. But I can't take him in a new, I don't mean this arrogantly at all, new Lexus, you know, SUV. I've got to make sure that he can travel. Uh, and they said, uh, well, sorry, sir. And I thought, okay, well, I'm smarter than your average bear. I said, okay, no problem. I'm going to take my dog and I'm going to go in the backyard and play with him. Before you close, please let me out. So they came out there 25 minutes later, and they go, sir, we're leaving. I went, great, where are you going to put my dog? And they said, we're going to put him in this cage. I went, awesome, what time do you open tomorrow? Sunday. They said, 8 o'clock. I'll say I'll be here at 745 knocking on your door. You sure you don't want to take him? I go, I guess you guys have been fooled a lot. That's You're hard not, of hearing, yeah, too, that's maybe? that's not who I am. Yeah. I'll be back. So the next day, 745, boom, 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 I'm here. They went, oh, you came back. Well, I imprinted Max also on his gums and his teeth. I imprinted him. He caught my scent. I rubbed his gums and his teeth, my scent was all over this dog. So it's called imprinting. So oh, they, go back. Oh, how's that work? I've never heard of that. Yeah, yeah. It's just called imprinting. So what you do as the master of, of your dog, you'll make sure he can pick up on all your scent. So all the senses and his gums and stuff like this. It's just a very, very old technique. I would rub his nose so he pick up my scent. Um, I'd let him get close to me with his face. And then I would imprint his gums and his teeth. It's called imprinting. Whoa. So anyway, when they brought him out, and I go, here, he comes immediately to my side and leans up against me. That's so that cool. That shows, you know, that he is, he's part of my team. Uh, we're a pack because what people don't understand is that every dog, even little fluffy out there, has the DNA of a wolf. Yeah. So by being a packed animal, you know what I mean? You have to be able to think this way too. So anyway, I took him out. Put him in the truck. He jumped in and he rode perfectly. I was going, oh my gosh, all the drama and dude, you could have taken him last night. I could have had him yeah. last night. Yeah. We went home and uh, he needed a little bit of training. Always train your pets. It's the best investment that you can ever do. And so I took him actually to man's best friend. And Jamie was over there and I left him there. I kept him with me for a month. And then I took him and I dropped him off for two weeks and um, went back one time to check on his training. And they had a window and they were inside the room training. But there's a door down here. Remember, I imprinted him. So Max is going through his training, but right in the middle of his training, he stopped, sat down, and looked at the door. Mm. Now, oop, he picked up on my scent, which I found amazing. That is, man. But I said, I'm going to go ahead and back out of here. We've got two more days of training. I'll see you on Friday. Sense of smell in animals. I don't think pe- people don't understand. It's times more powerful it's than It's insane, man. man. When yeah. you see, if, if uh, I'm a big hunter, you know, uh, outdoorsman, when, when an when when an animal catches your wind, I mean from fifty or a yeah. hundred or one hundred fifty yards, it's just incredible. They are amazing. They, the, it's it's uh, superhuman. Yeah, yeah it's, and they'll come back to you. And and you know they talk about Rainbow Bridge. I I absolutely believe that. I believe our pets will be able to find us again. But I think, I'm kind of sappy that way. Uh, well, I, I hope, man. I my best dog I ever had, Big Weimaraner, about that oh, size. Oh yeah. I actually uh, used man's best friend for him as well. He got kennel cough there, which is kind of a bummer. Okay, um, yeah, we did it, too. It is. Yeah, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. But um, I hope. I mean, such a such a. I went through some tough, tough times with that dog. He got me through some just very difficult bond. times. I call it an unbreakable bond. Now, so you you adopt Max, you I rescue did. Max. I did. Um, did you had you developed any of the GenoStim products at that time? Oh, or, absolutely. Yeah. Well, so you had you had already, or they well, were in. It was the beginning stages of that. Well, it goes back to Joe Cocker. Uh, of course, Joe Cocker. What, awesome what else would you name a Cocker star. Spaniel? Right. There you got to name yeah. Joe Cocker. So Joe was my companion when I was going through training to become a Franciscan. And Joe comes down with a horrible skin cancer, which is a side effect of spaying and neutering. People have no idea the horrible things that happen when you, when you spay and neuter. Now, we do this because we have an overpopulation, but it has so many side effects. It's horrible. So Joe Carker was with me. I'm training under Father Ray, you know, and actually thinking about taking the vows of a Franciscan and, and everything. And Joe comes down with a horrible skin cancer. And so I nurse him. I do everything I possibly can. Oh, my gosh. Dr. Giggleman, a great Aggie vet, worked with me. Giggum. Yeah. And uh, finally, I just had to say goodbye to him. And he actually died um, nose to nose with me. I was nose with him. Oh, wow. Because Joe used to come up and I go, 
I'd breathe and he'd always go back. It was hilarious. It was our thing to say hello. You know, you get down with your little pup, go. And, uh, but he died and I caught his last breath. Strange, isn't it? That is. And it just broke my heart. I bet. I just cried and I didn't understand how I lost him so early and what was this about? And even though I prayed every prayer I knew in the world and I did everything I possibly could, um, with the vet medicine and stuff like that, I couldn't save him. Man. And I couldn't live with that because then I was able to start seeing older dogs everywhere. And I started seeing health issues with dogs everywhere. And I went, this is unacceptable. So I started studying about you know nutrition with dogs. Well, vitamins and minerals are synthetic. They're poisonous. They're made from petroleum products. That wasn't the answer. So I said, what is the life force of the body? Well, the life force of the body is the endocrine system, which produces hormones. Well, when you spay and neuter, you break the endocrine loop. And a dog or a cat only starts producing 1% of the hormones they did before the elective surgery. Wow. And you have to say, well, how? This is horrible. What are the side effects of this? Well, the side effects of spaying and neutering are three forms of cancer. Addison's disease, Cushing's disease, hypothyroidism, diabetes, even uh, uh, dogs, oh my gosh, their hip plates won't close up without these hormones. So they say it's hip dysplasia. Not really in that breed. That it correlates can, directly to, to spaying and neutering. Absolutely, it does. Wow. And it goes on and on. And people need to understand also is that every four days, or every day to man is four days to a dog. They have progressive aging. And it also compare also to the size of the dog too. But so never take a, a day for granted with your dog because it may be one day for you and we don't think about it, yeah. but it's four days or more for them. And that's because they suffer from progressive aging compared to man. So we think about a dog, you think about, you get your puppy and usually it's full grown within what? About one year. Yeah. Or even Maybe before, 18, on the yeah. Breed. yeah. So now, they're still in puppy form. Don't get me wrong. Right. But in terms of the structure of their body, right. now they're going to still fill out, you know, in terms of muscularity. Yeah, and they're spending some of these dogs so early yeah. that they don't have a chance. The the dog, if it's if if it's going through uh, four times what we go through in one day, that means its, rege- its body is regenerating all yes. those cells yes. four times faster than a, the human cell you regenerates. You say that, absolutely. And so it would stand to reason that nutrition and good supplements for a dog, it just, it, one leads right to the next one it in does. terms of does. improving the longevity. Let's go back, though, to, to the beginning. Perhaps. How did you get into studying peptides? How did you become proficient and an authority at it? And then how did you develop, what was your first product? The Geno Stim, then the Geno Stim No, my first product was the gift for life. Was it? Yes. Wow. And it's a hilarious story. So I started working with every doctor that I could find, endocrinologist, um, natural paths, you name it, and started finding out that the essence of life is a peptide. Every cell in your dog's, cat's body, which are billions, has a peptide. So I said, okay, so it's not vitamins or minerals. That's a sales job. So I'm a dumb construction guy. So a, let's, let's say a cell is a house. Mm-hmm. Peptides are the, the brick and the mortar and the lumber and that the you build the house. And the communication of the body. Yeah, every cell in the body has a peptide. We might want to think about that. It's kind of important. It would seem. You know what I mean? So again, and there's also 40 peptide hormones. Uh, estrogen, proestrogen. Men said, well, I don't want that. Well, no, you need it for healthy sperm and joint pain relief. Human growth hormone, peptide hormone. Testosterone, peptide hormone. Uh, endorphins, peptide hormone. So when our peptides are down, our hormone levels, those 40 hormone levels start lowering also because they don't have the fuel to fuel those hormones, which are so important. Hormones are the sap of the body. So was it Joe Cocker that, that you were like, oh, I got to figure out something all that about I Joe Cocker. It really, all started that, with Joe Cocker. That was the genesis yeah. of Genostim. And so I did it and I was able to start thinking about a peptide source. And then I was able to work with a couple other people and we were able to actually do this. So I created the Coca-Cola formula, the, the ingestible peptide, not injectable peptides. Right. The Russian love injectables. Uh, Guy Mesker is a huge fan of injectable peptides and he's really good and knows what he's doing. But I don't want to do an injectable, number one. I want an ingestible, and we wanted to make it at 5,000 Daltons, which is the atomic weight, which means it's so small that sublingually, as soon as you, you eat it, it doesn't even go through the stomach. It immediately goes directly into the blood. 
Uh, we were talking about the Russians, too, before we sat down. So uh, explain what they were doing that we didn't know they were doing that was okay, yeah, that, yeah. That, w- that was putting them light years in front of all of our athletes. And yeah. then how you bottled that sure, for sure, animals sure. first and then for humans after. And I got a funny story about the Garden Police Department, too. Really? <laughs> so Fire it off, man. Oh, so Fire it off. So in the book, you can actually read um, about what the Russians are doing. Now, the Russians were having a problem with their military because their military was aging faster. Let's face it, the, the, that's the Russians again. But they do drink a lot as part of, of who they are. And so they were losing these officers and their pilots and stuff like that. And I need to be able to keep these men on their job longer. So they started working with peptides. So the Russians were light years ahead of us in peptides. So again, when we got back to the Olympics and the Russians used to kick our rear end, uh, and everybody thought it was steroids, but they could never trace it. You know why? Because they were doing peptides. Okay. Wow. Instant growth hormone, instant growth factor one and two, connected tissue growth factors, uh, epidermis growth factors, uh, fibroblast growth factors, and stuff like that. So you can rejuvenate a lot faster um, than a person who is not on peptides. So if I'm taking peptides and I'm in the gym and you're not, I'm going to rejuvenate and recover faster than you can on the cellular level. So yeah, so that's what the Russians were actually doing. So, but we wanted an ingestible. So we had to find a kosher protein source that had the naturally occurring growth factors in it also. And so I was able to help do that. And uh, so I've been doing it now for 20 years. When you are introducing peptides back into your system uh, Mm -hmm. for performance enhancement, whether it's for a human or for a canine. Or or sexual enhancement or or brain function. Neural growth factors are fantastic. All, All performance. Yeah. Is that offsetting this really high stress lifestyle that a lot of us lead where our cortisol levels are spiking, then plummeting, spiking, plummeting, and then sometimes dropping below even the baseline level? Yeah, absolutely, because it's all about bringing the endocrine system back into homeostasis and homeostasis. Everybody out there is just a fancy word that says means balance. Why don't we just say balance? But we got to come up with homeostasis. It makes it sound smarter. But again, it's all about hormonal balancing, but at optimal, youthful or useful levels. So again, these peptides have been in my blood for 20 years, right? And so I've had optimal, youthful, useful hormone levels in my body for 20 years. I've also trained and stuff like that. So people, you know, argue with me that I'm 60, I'm 63 and they want to argue with me about it. I said, okay, well, maybe I'm not seriously 63 on the Seder level, but on the days that I've walked this earth, I'm 63, but they're 10 and 20 years younger than me, but they look older. They don't have the energy levels and they're taking little blue Viagra pills and they just don't understand their lives falling apart. Well, with men, you know, testosterone levels do start going down at the age of 29. What do we do about that? Well, we exercise to increase testosterone. We eat proper diets. You have to invest in yourself instead of just giving up and going to alcohol or going to pills or just giving up. Well, I haven't given up. I'm still living my life. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and make an announcement here on your show. Oh. That no one knows about. Really? This is going to be, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do it and because I'm, I'm very happy. But uh, I'm, I'm 63 years old. I have a son who's 11, Lauriston Crockett the fourth. Um, you know, he's got that lean, she'll keep it going, but no one knows about this until right now, but, um, I'm going to be a father in October. What? 63. I'm still having children. Brother. So congrats. My, thank That's you. amazing. I'm so stoked. Uh, it just gives me chills. Matter of fact, when I leave your show today, I'll be heading straight over to the doctor for a sonogram. Maxton Lee Crockett, the first Maxton. Yeah, love it. That's will awesome. be here in October. Wow. And so, yeah, my son, Maxton will be here. And so Maxton, you know, Lorston comes from the Lorston Castle in Edinburgh. So we're Scottish, English, and Irish. So so I had to find another Scottish name. So it comes from the Tower of Maxton and the lands of Maxton. So, yeah, he's still got his Scottish heritage. And now he's the first, so he can start his lineage with his family. So, yeah, my child is on the way. He is one healthy peptide baby, too. Well, that's awesome. He is moving and grooving. And (laughs) obviously, you're not shooting blanks. No, no. And and I'm not using blue pills. And nothing happens. My... My sexual reproduction has not changed at all. Wow. Nothing. Nothing's that almost, changed. That's almost unbelievable. So we have talked just a couple of times before we, we came on. So actually, today's the first time I ever met you in right. person. Met the parking used, lot. Yeah, I've used uh, Genostim Pro for years, found you on the ticket. We talked about that already. 
we're seeing so many of these low T centers. Well, and we got yeah. pellets, they we got me. gels. <laughs> well, let's so, go back also to the police department. Let's okay, find yeah. out the, so the Garland Police Department, I was working with their canine unit out there. And the SWAT team started stealing the bottle of the canine product because they saw that the growth factors and peptides in it. Really? And they called me and I said, what are you guys doing? Are you guys stealing the dog product? They went, Crockett, we want these growth factors and peptides. I went, all you have to do is ask me. I created Genostem. They said, what's that? I said, that's the human version of this. So you don't have to eat grilled onions along with the beef liver flavor of, of, of the gift for life. And so I pulled up in Garland. and said, hey, meet us at the parking lot. And when I pulled up, I got surrounded by SWAT officers and lieutenants and everybody who wanted the peptides. That's a true story. It happened in Garland, Texas. So that's how we kicked off. That's amazing. So this supplement is there to replace depletion, but it's also the peptides are also, okay. It's also helping you recover. So if you deplete yourself through a training, so strenuous training session Uh in your body and your natural hormone levels, they're, trying to bring you back but then you add the the Peptide gs6 fuel. or the or the pro and right. that just amps up your ability to recover faster so that you're in you're, working you're, out with 29 year olds and then you're back in you're there you're giving fuel to your peptide day. hormones okay and then your peptide hormones talk to every cell in your body and so and the difference between genosim gs6 and genosim pro is i made genosim gx first okay this is my first product that i came out with and then um i started working with uh different seal teams and I started working uh, with Chris Kyle. I don't bring his name up very much. Um, what a neat guy. I bet. Most down-to-earth person I've ever met in my life. And he was he was taking Geno Stem and guys and gals everywhere. And, of course, I got on 1310 and ticket and started doing that. But what was happening was with Geno Stem GS6, it's only 100 milligrams per tablet. And um, so body mass wise, if you get over 175 pounds, like I'm 180, I keep 180. And I, what are you pushing? Uh, 275. Okay. So yeah. anyway, so you, because of body mass, you needed more peptides. So my guys were saying, hey, Crockett, man, we're having to buy two bottles to ah. really get our body mass. I went, okay, well, let's do something about that. So I came out with Pro, which has 150 milligrams per tablet. It's the size of an aspirin. Yeah, it is. Very and, small. And it's very easy to take. And you take it once, uh, excuse me, twice a day. And the reason you take it twice a day is because the peptide only stays in the blood for 8 to 12 hours. So to stay in, there's that word again, homeostasis, one in the morning with or without food. You take that peptide on an empty stomach and you don't feel anything because it's so natural. Unlike vitamins and minerals and stuff like that, you can't do it. And uh, one of your claims on this, which I assume is proven, is that it helps with sleep oh. as well. Can you talk about that sleep, man? Wow. What an elusive son of a bitch sleep can be. (laughs) (laughs) I can't tell you how many people we talk about that you you sleep like a baby. Because when your hormones are in level, and also you're getting more work done during the day, you're going to find that, God, I'm able to do more. Now, you have more energy. There's no getting around it. You know this. But it is not a stimulant. It's not like drinking coffee or taking an energy drink and stuff like that. You just have this youthful energy, and you're getting more done. I've been up since 5.30 you know, with Max, he gets me up every day to eat breakfast and go outside. He's my alarm clock. And I'll stay up tonight till 11.30 or 12. And I'll go to sleep. I'll go straight to sleep. And the next day we start again. So I need about seven hours of sleep, maybe. You know what I mean? I think most people should really get your sleep, getting that REM sleep and recovery. But yeah, you do sleep so much better uh, when your hormones are balanced. And also it has NGFs in it, which are neural growth factors. And the cool thing about that is it helps the synapses of the brain fire more effectively. So actually brain function increases on NGFs, which you can find in the, in the peptide matrix. And can you talk about, you know, from the from the trainer, the uh, the fitness background that you have years and years of it, how right. important it is. You go work out and eat right. But then if you're not getting that REM sleep, you're almost sh- just shooting yourself in the foot, aren't you? Well, you are because you that's where you're actually recovering. You need that sleep. But the problem a lot of people are having these days, and I talk about it all the time, is turn off your computer. Mm. Turn off the phone at least an hour before you go to sleep. But the problem is people are so addicted to it, they keep going back to social media, and they keep going back and checking their Bitcoin, and they keep and they find a reason, well, oh, I, I know i got to turn it off, but I need to do this real fast. That's just the brain lying to you because of the addiction of the phone. You need to turn it off, get it out of the room with you, so there's no reason to get on an iPad or anything else. Yeah. And once your body kicks into that REM, 
however long that is, because everybody's sleep cycle is a little bit different. Right. Isn't it in that state of, of, our, of REM sleep that your body is producing the max amount of, of its own human growth hormone, which it, is it, helping it, you recover? It, it is, and it's all about recovery then on the cellular level. Do too. you have stories of people who have started taking this, who just suffered and, and battled insomnia? They started taking this and it just over squared them up? And over really? and over and over again. And we talk about it. And they come back to me, oh, Crockett, oh, my gosh, I'm actually sleeping through the night. Interesting. And I went, that's fantastic. Okay, so we know that we're working there. And a lot of people come back also and go, man, I'm taking a peptide, but I don't know if I feel anything. Because it's so natural. It's your body doing the work. Your hormones are doing the work. We're stimulating it through peptides, natural peptides. So if I do a blood draw or a urine uh, specimen on you, you can't find the peptide because it's so 100% natural compared to the drugs and stuff like that, and the low T-centers, which I don't like them. And I've called them out to debate me hundreds of times, and they won't show up. Why? Well, because they know they're doing harm. And they stand to lose. Strokes, heart attacks, really? uh, thicker blood. There's so many side effects. And then they get on there and say, well, Crockett, you know, what's your testosterone? I go, my natural testosterone right now is 780. And as a 63-year-old, that's pretty dang good. Wow. I'm in a natural zone. I don't wow. take anything except for exercise, take peptides, and eat a normal diet. And I like to eat. And I also like to slam dunk some cookies at night sometimes in my almond milk. <laughs> what is your what is your nutrition protocol? Are you eating by macros? Are you trying to do, just, you know, protein, limit the fat? Don't even carbs? get into it. I just eat really? a normal diet. Now, I'm not a big carb guy. I have to say that. I don't do a lot of carbs. They don't do anything for me. I'm not a big spaghetti guy or a potato guy or anything like that. So I like do your like la- lean meats. Your last three days, what, what did you eat in the morning, in the middle of the day, and at night? God, in the morning, it's horrible. I drink orange juice and I put a little creatine in there. I, okay. like, I like my creatine. And um, and then I like my chocolate almond milk along with Cheerios. Okay. Okay. And that's how I start my day off with a hard-boiled egg, too. Okay. Right on. And then you you working out in the mornings or you working no, out I in the work evenings? Out, I work out in the evenings. I'm okay. an evening guy because when I go in there, I have a set routine. And I do have a thousand reps that I want to get out of the way. So I get there about 7 30 or 8 o'clock. So most of the people are gone. And I usually have a clear path to get through my routines. And I can finish that in an hour and 15 minutes. So, but I also teach lighter weight, more reps, better results. Okay. Why? Just because of the, fu- the flexibility and the functionality well, that I, that promotes? I, I don't have the ego that I have to. I used to bench oh, 115 pounds anymore. Walking around. Oh, well, I'm, I still am pretty fit guy. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I've got you something. You look like you throw down, brother. Yeah. I, I, I do it. You know, it, it's just the look that I want. I want to be lean. And uh, I don't have the ego to bench anymore. But it's all about motion also. So, again, I say find a trainer, look at him. He'll teach you what he's, well, how he looks. So, uh, again... Uh, it's just the routines I do. Uh, I like the endorphins. You know, I'm an endorphin guy, man. Let that sit or this and the uh, uh, rock and roll. So like a runner's high. Yeah. And so this is just what I do to keep motion. And of course, now with all these certifications, I'm doing Pilates. I saw Sylvester Stallone doing Pilates. I found it very interesting. I look across between yoga and movement and being biomechanics, bio life mechanics movement. So I'm a life movement a mechan- a trainer. So I went in there, I tried it out, and I found it fascinating. So now I've added Pilates to my routines, and I'm still staying in the gym, so I'll do it sometimes two a days. And I'm going to go ahead and get their certification just to put it on my resume because I find it so amazing. Because as I do get older, I still like doing these kind of routines. What does the Pilates do for you that, uh, you know, a HIIT workout might not do for you or a strenuous resistance oh my workout? Total core okay. work, and I'm, I'm finding some places where I'm weaker. I'm not able to hold my body in that position where I buy mechanically, you know, with the training that I'm doing between the posterior and anterior workouts and make sure I'm staying in balance and my posture is proper and things of this nature. But I found weaknesses. I have found weaknesses using Pilates and now I'm able to take care of that. So even my core has become so much stronger. So it's really dialing that balance. You've used the word balance probably 10 times already yeah. in the podcast. That seems like... Um Seems like longer, a, a healthier, priority. Life balance. Yeah, yeah priority Take the center path. Yeah. Are you um? So you're working out. You're doing your thousand reps. Are you eating your? Are you eating dinner then pretty late after your workout? You know, sometimes I will go to. Um, I, I love going to La Madeline and a oh, uh, sampler platter. Yeah. So I'll get the Caesar with a little bit of chicken on it. I'll do a soup and then I'll do the strawberries roaming off and then I'll drink a water and I'm gone. It's perfect for me. Or I eat lean meats. Yeah. You know, I, I may eat. Uh, uh, chicken, some lean chicken breast and stuff like that. We all do that. 
um, and a lot of vegetables. And, and then I'm a big guy on roughage to keep that food moving through that right. system. I think a lot of people are having colon problems and cancerous problems also because that food is stagnating and they're large and small intestines. So I believe in keeping that happening too. You see all these different fads, dietary nutrition fads, right? Keto, Atkins, it all before. There's nothing uh, new. intermittent fasting, uh, the carnivore diet, sure. all of these things. Is this just really, again, in the vein of, of balance, it's just finding what works for you and yeah. what's sustainable? Is and, that what you And would- again, it's a sales pitch because they're selling something because they'll come out with a book or they'll come out with a certain diet that you can order or supplements that you're doing stuff like that. It's just the next thing. Whereas you can eat a normal diet and exercise and you're going to do great. Don't you think it's also that everyone's looking for the easy button? Of course. Hey, if I intermittent fast, I don't have to work out as long where when you really start getting in the in the groove working out, you actually look forward to it. It's not drudgery. It's not like the bu- the bummer of your day. Maybe it's what you look forward to in your day. I do. But going back to your compassion, your empathy, when you're talking to or you would talk to a client, super out of shape, seems like their life's falling apart. They come to you, they're like, man, I'm at the end of my rope. I got to get in shape. Okay. Um. Is that what you're talking to him about? We got to find something that works for you that right. you can stick with. Not that we're not going to do, you know, buds training like you're going in the seals. We're going to do and something you can stick of. with. They're afraid right. to go to the gym because they can't. And they're also embarrassed because of the way they look. That's why I inspire people and go, look, we all have been here. But it starts with the first day and the first step. You have to be willing to take the first step. If you're willing to do that, and invest in yourself. I'm willing to invest my time with you also to walk with you and give you the skills that you need. Now, I don't train anybody anymore. But what I do is I'm in the gym being the only biomechanics trainer really in there because they don't really teach it too much anymore. Everett Auberg used to teach it over at the Cooper Center. Amazing book. He wrote uh, uh, Biomechanically Correct by Everett Auberg. Uh, you can still find it, I think, on Amazon and some used bookstores. But it's an amazing, I call it the Bible of, of movement. But anyway, so learn the simple motions of, of biomechanics. And I said, let's just start with the day. But once we get you going, like walking the mile, if I can get you to walk a mile every day, then I'm changing the mindset and you're starting to become a part of your life. And after six weeks, it's become a habit. We touched on this uh, maybe 20 minutes ago. You talked about how important it is to prioritize self-care. Yes. Invest in yourself. Yeah. I kind of came into this almost epiphany, um, I don't know, about a year ago. So I'm a builder. And if, uh, if, if anybody's familiar with construction, you can't make chicken salad out of chicken shit in construction. If you mm-hmm. have bad materials or bad labor or bad know-how or a mixture of any of those, the product's not going to be good. Right. So I was remembering back to some custom projects where the client was ideal, where the project had the funding it needed, where the materials were perfect. And I would go and I would look forward to it and I would take pride in improving that project sure. every day until it was done. And I said, wow, that's how it is with self-care, mm-hmm. at least for me. So if I'm like, man, I'm, a, I'm low priority. I got to stack this bank account. I got employees. I got other things to do. If I got you lose goals, your health, dreams. You can't do that. Well, yeah, but as a, as soon as I started to invest time, time's the only thing we can't get back. We can get money back. We can't get time back. Right. Starting to invest time in myself, I started to love myself more. Mm-hmm. It's very odd how that directly correlates. Do you bump up against, or did you? Um, bump up against these entrepreneurs who are like, man, I I know I got to get fit, but I there's just no time. And what's your advice there? I understand what, what we value and what we prioritize is what we make time for. But sometimes as you know, and you know, cause you're an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. they're just, there are not enough hours in the day. Sometimes what's your, like just your bottom, just ground level advice to guys or gals like that are like Loriston Crockett. I got to get fit, but I don't have time. What do you tell them? I said, well, you know, you, again, what's important to you? Now, you think that your job is over here and making the money and creating and everything is right here. But again, once you create this, if you're stealing from yourself and you're ruining your health, what does it mean at the end of the day? Um, there's so many people that have ruined their health and become wealthy, and then they spend all that money again trying to get their health back. Again, it comes back to, and you've heard this with me again, balance. You must find the balance and you must invest in yourself. There's just no way of getting around it because sooner or later, you're going to have to pay the piper. Um, a buddy of mine recently, 
um, worked his life, all of his life. I mean, we're the same age. And, um, and he just dropped dead of a heart attack. He's got his grandchildren. He's got his children. But he busted his butt his whole life, and he didn't take care of his health. And now he lost everything. So, again, sooner or later, you're going to have to pay the price. So are you going to do it now where you're an older person and you have no health left and you can't enjoy anything? And you're going to look back and go, why didn't I invest in myself? Um, I think my curse is going to be, and, and that's horrible to say, but I've actually prayed about this, is watching my friends die. Mm. And I'm watching it right now. But yet I'm having children. They talk about going home with their grandchildren or this or that. And, that, and that's like, I don't have anything to relate to them anymore because I've invested in my life in this. And of course, this is my lifestyle and this is my business. I'm so lucky and blessed to do what I get to do because I get to work with animals from here all the way into Hong Kong. I get to work with people all over the world too. So again, you must invest in yourself. There's no choice. You have no choice or you're going to die a shorter, probably more horrible life. Where did your free thinking mentality, your do it yourself approach to life, where'd that come from? I think it came from my dad. Again, my dad always said, find a niche and fill it. And I, I look around and I say, God, I don't want to be that person, or I can do better than that, or let's find that niche and see what we can do. Or maybe what? our thinking, our collective yeah. thinking on this isn't correct if our animals are dying when they're all five well, years old. And they teach us everything we need to know. Mm. And I always try to find how can I bless that person? person? How can I become a blessing to others instead of always thinking about self? Because that's where ego and a narcissistic mindset comes in, where I've never met a stranger in my life. I see some people in the gym, and I see them working out by themselves, and they're new there, and I know they're new there, and I always introduce myself. I said, hey, what's your name? Hey, I just saw you in there a couple of times. I want to introduce myself, because when I see you here, I want to say hello, and wow, a big smile comes on their face, and they know they're part of it. And they may be really out of shape, um, beautiful old lady last night, Mimi. Okay. She was trying to, <laughs> to work her obliques on a machine, but she was destroying herself with all these plates and jerking. So I gave her some instruction. Hey, Mimi, think about this. She goes, oh my gosh. Wow. Biggest grin on her face. She goes, are you going to be here tomorrow? I said, I sure am. I'll come up and get a hug from you. You know what I mean? So you bless other people, invest in other people. It's going to come back. You reap what you sow. You know, everybody says Jesus didn't talk about karma. Yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, he did quite a bit. You know you what know? I mean? Yeah. So invest in yourself. I know you're busy and stuff like that. But again, if you don't, it's all going to be taken from you in the end anyway. All you really do is have your health. You're, we, we're talking a lot about physical health, physical wellness and vitality. The amount of time, though, that you put into your spiritual health and your mental health, do, right. you, do you meditate? Do you, do, do you have other protocols that you use there? You know, the greatest meditation, the greatest prayer time I have is when I walk. When I'm walking, I can get into such a zone where nothing else is going around me. Max is with me. I got his feet tapping in front of me. He's trained to walk to my left at all times. And I just get into a zone. And, but that's how I do it. Everyone has their own way. Uh, you know, Jesus is going to your closet and pray and things of that nature. But me, I love to walk and be out under the stars and just take it all in and breathe when things are quiet in the evening. And, and, and talk then and get things out then and, uh, and express myself that way uh, with my faith. Very cool. And, and I think of people, you might want to give it a try. Hey, it works for me. You know what I mean? And it's quiet at night. And, and, and it's nice, at least up here in, in the Plano area where I live. Yeah, absolutely. Your entrepreneurial path, when you when, when you lost Joe Cocker and you said, is that is that by, by chance No, that's Joe actually and Samantha. Max? That's okay. A, and that's Max, but that's my Samantha Very that I cool. lost. And there's, of course, there's Big Max. We, uh, we hear a, a lot from entrepreneurs about their success stories, right? right? What were some of the just main, just knock down, drag out challenges that you had to address and you had to fight through just knuckles? I, I, I still do it every day. W but w creating this, was there anything specific? Yeah. Veterinarians hate me. Yeah. <laughs> because. You're costing them business? Well, yeah. I mean, Dr. Danny Cox, famous pet vet, he and I are close friends. He even did a commercial that says, it is true. I do not have any drugs that can do what the gift for life peptides do. He got called down to Austin. They were about to fine him because another vet made a complaint against him. And he went down there. He showed the technology. He says, show me what we have. And they went, oh, wow, this is really cool. And then they wanted him to be on the board. When he was going down there to get fined, then when he showed the peptides, because remember, every cell in the body has a peptide, the endocrine system, how does it work? We kickstart the adrenal cortex of a dog after they've been spayed and neutered. 
So even with the adrenal cortex can start producing those lost hormones, small amounts, but they're still getting them. So yeah, so that so some vets just hate me because we do so much, and sick animals are a business. Our job is to keep that animal out of there and give them a longer, healthier life with fewer vet visits, and we do it. They can't argue with us about it, but they don't like us, and they don't like it because they can't write a script. I've had Big Pharma come to me twice and try to buy me out, and I won't do it. Do you think if they did buy you out, they would just 86 your product because it's costing they money? They could, or they could pick it through the roof. I've made this cost effective. You know, I've had more people come to me and crock it. Oh, my God, you can be selling for $80 a bottle. I go, yep, sure could. But how many animals would go without it because people can't afford it? So at $39.99, which this is a pharmaceutical-grade peptide, and where we actually make this product, and I rent the machines and stuff, we make you know pharmaceutical drugs in there. So again, Less than I made a it, dollar a tab. Yeah, I made it so everyone can experience it because there's nothing, and watch, I experienced it with Joe Cocker. Um, there's nothing more painful. Yeah, it sucks, man. There's just that when when you're really close with with one of, with a buddy and yeah. you lose them, it's it's a real loss. It, it, people who don't have a lot of experience with dogs can't really relate. When when you're facing these adversities in your entrepreneurial path, as you're you know establishing businesses sure. and all of that, are you just laser focused on the end goal and so these little things that could get the normal guy down they don't get you down or do you have times and you're like man well i'll be darned maybe one, maybe more than just one or two guinness here or there well you know it, it's a funny thing i went to work for a gentleman by the name of randy campbell randy was a sog captain in vietnam and an airborne ranger and he gave me a lesson in life that i've never forgotten he says, Crockett, let's talk about life. Yes, sir. He says, your objective is to get from point A to point B. I said, yes, sir. He says, there's going to be explosions going off all around you. What's your objective? I said, to get from point A to point B. He said, exactly. Never concentrate on the explosions and everything else around you. Get from point A to point B. That's what your order is. Do you understand? I went, yes, sir. And he says, great, go get me lunch. (laughs) (laughs) Go get me lunch. I said, okay, you got it. I know if I'm going to leave here, I'm going to get you lunch. I'll be right back. But the lesson truly was, and he was a great mentor to me. Uh, Matter of fact, I just lost him uh, last year. I'm very uh, sorry. To cancer. uh, And uh, and who knows? I mean, he was in Vietnam. He was a SOG captain, uh, Agent Orange. Who knows what it was? He was eaten up by cancer. It still breaks my heart. But it was still wonderful to be able to be trained by him. And he was like a father figure to me. So again, I have to say that that training that he gave me um, was what made me who, who I am. I remember I focus, I know what my objective is, and I'm going to get there. And today I still talk about peptides. And then I also talk about how the industry lies about supplements. You know, what, what really angers me is that supplements, we say made in the USA, Everything, every ingredient, everything I do is made right here in America. And But you can buy supplements like your vitamins and your minerals that are made by, uh, by petroleum products. These are petroleum products that you're taking. It has nothing to do about food sources. Plus, you're not vitamin deficient anyway. And on all your processed food, they also have those synthetic vitamins in there. But here's the big lie, which really angers me is that I can buy a truckload or a boatload of stuff from China, what is not regulated. You don't really know what you're taking. Again, you and I talked about sawdust. But as long as you bottle it right here in America, you can say made in the USA. Wow. So you can take the components. I'd be like You can actually buy the pills from China and ship it over here. But as long as you bottle it here, you can get away with saying made in America. Nothing is as it seems it would seem. No, right, exactly. And since it's not regulated over there, and we all know that China likes to cut a lot of corners and they also um, don't have the purest ingredients, I wouldn't touch anything. Whereas Hong Kong buys from me, okay? But I won't buy anything from them. Not going to do it. I don't trust their sources. So, yeah, so we have to think about that. So when you're looking at something made in America like GNC products, sorry, I'm going to call you straight out. That's Chinese products. I wouldn't buy anything from a GNC. Wow. I don't care if it's a Korean monohydrate. I ain't buying it. Amazing. Yeah. The, uh, I think the funny thing, too, is 
you know, we're so concentrated on our own nutrition as people. And like we talked about earlier, food, what we're putting in our own bodies, pure, better water, not just out of the tap. Sure. There's fluoride in the, but then the dog just gets out of the tap and then out of the bag pellets. You, you used an example before we went on. Would you want to eat cereal all day, every oh day for God. the rest of your life? Can, can you survive on cereal the rest of your life? I don't know. Your protein sources and synthetic vitamins survive. It certainly would not. You would not thrive. You will not thrive. We could put it that way. You might survive for a shorter lifespan. This is why our dogs are dying so fast compared to dogs in Europe. And dogs in Europe aren't spayed and neutered. And again, we have an overpopulation problem. Don't get me wrong. And our and our bully breeders out there, I love you. You guys are amazing. But you're creating so many puppies that we don't have the time to save them and find them homes because you had not believed how many purebreds are in the pounds. Yeah, it's, and it's not just issue. bullies. It's German Shepherds and Dobermans and Goldies and everything. You know Weims, what I mean? I mean, Weimariners are very misunderstood. People like them. Right. They get them. They don't understand the disposition is there. They're called the Velcro dog. They're on you all day. Wherever right, you go, right, right. they're on you. Where Lots I, of energy. Well, I've said with the AKC and other organizations, I said, I don't know. Why don't we have a lottery system? Why just because I have this pup with this paperwork, can I just breed all I want to? And you're going to sanction it. We know we have an overpopulation problem. Why don't we do a lottery or you can breed every other year? Anything we can do to slow down the population. Uh, Dr. Danny Cox says that the breeders are going to hate my guts because that's how they make a living. Well, shame on you. Shame on you when you know and you cannot control once that puppy leaves your your place, what's going to happen, how that puppy's going to breed and stuff like that. Take responsibility for what you do. And the organizations, I'm very passionate, take responsibility. We can do something here that can save lives because nothing breaks my heart more than see an innocent dog who does not understand why he's loved and all of a sudden why he's on death's door. It's just unacceptable. On no all doubt levels. about it. Gift for Life is a supplement that you add to the nutrition protocol of your dog. What do you feed Max every day? Um, I actually feed Max. Uh, I was trying him on the farmer's dog. People approach me all the time, which is pretty good stuff. Yeah, I use so that. It's human grade, right? Yes. Uh, so I use Nom Nom now just because I like the texture of the chicken and the pork and the beef. But it's still got that raw element to Absolutely. it. The it's farmer's pure, dog it's does. human grade. You get all your nutrients stuff, natural nutrients, not nutrients that's been added into sure. like all these dog foods with all these Beautiful labels. It looks like my dog's going to live forever, which is the biggest bull. Because and they have the sawdust line, in them. It, yeah, it's about making profit. But I can sell you. I don't really care about your dog, but I care about making that sell. And so that's another thing that really bothers me, too, is that when people call me uh, or call the company, I call them back personally. And for some reason, it freaks them out. They go, wait a minute, you're the dude on the commercial. I went, yeah, I'm the dude also at Formulated, and I'm the dude that cares about your health and your dog's health. I said, when's the last time that you had anybody from Bully Brand or, or anybody else call you? Blue Buffalo. Yeah, their CEO Roy, call you. And, right? and I said, here's my personal cell phone number. Call me if you have a question. Good for you, man. And it's never been abused. Wow, that's really interesting. That's, um, yeah, I just, I, I think that people don't, just don't consider it maybe, or maybe they had a dog, then they had a couple of kids and the dog kind of gets back burner. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and they, it's easy to throw some stuff in there and the dog's going to eat it and you go, okay, I fed him. I feel good because this packaging over here tells me that I've done the right thing, but you don't. And when it comes time and they start aging faster with more joint pain and stuff like that, and then your heart breaks. And I said, well, what did you do to invest in your dog's health? Yeah. You get in what you you get out what you put in. When you when you're formulating all this, when you're starting the company, the science of peptides was not foreign to you. But did you immerse yourself in just everything research? Everything I did, yeah. And when I'm going to the lab, uh, it's funny. uh, uh, David Hensler, who is a friend of mine, who created Five Hour Energy. Oh, and it was created right here in Dallas, Texas. Is that a fact? Yeah, absolutely. And I've walked in, and he says, "Crockett, you know, I'm a biochemist." I know, dude, I love working with you. He goes, how do you know what to do? I said, I don't know. I just come up with formulas in my head, and I come in here, and you and I work it out. He goes, but you already know what you're doing. So you kind of have a feel for it just based on your experience? It's just got to be a gift. It has to be a God-given gift. I don't know how to explain it um, other than I just have it. I focus on it. I do my research on it. Um, like our new product, uh, Canine Prime, which we're going to come back and talk about in the future, I hope, also. Yes. Um, comp- uh, dogs who compete, hunting dogs, or big bully brands, or 
uh, dogs or doing pulling contests or jumping contests, stuff like that. We're about to come out and change the supplement world forever with Canine Prime by the Gift for Life. And I'm using liver powder, grass-fed American beef, human-grade liver powder. Now, as bodybuilders, you know that we take in liver because it's a superfood. All of our nutrients are in there that we need as bodybuilder for muscle. And I've also added 60 milligrams of the peptide, and it's in a scoop now. Now, you can throw it down. They can lick it up, or you can throw it on any food. And now you've made that food, even some crappy foods out there, a superfood. And like I said, we're using American beef, grass-fed beef right here in America. I'm not using Argentine beef or anything else. Everything's from America. And... Um, it's pretty amazing what the trials that we've done. Even Max. Now, remember, Max is a fully trained dog. But when I pull out that beef liver, his senses turn on and he knows because when dogs, you know, or wolves are out there, they eat the liver of other animals. First, that's, high difference. Oh, that's what the first. alpha, you, they kill an animal. A wolf pack kills, takes down an elk. The alpha gets the liver. The liver. The All whole thing. The yeah, everyone so. stands back. He dials in on the liver, and then everyone else can attack yeah, whatever else they and want. So the cats have got Angel and Charlie Tuxedo in the house, and they could be upstairs, and they come down. And Max, shroom, he's right beside me. And like I said, he's highly trained. But if I pull out a bag of the beef liver, he'll jump up. I've actually seen him try to take a bite of it. His in- his instincts his just instincts take over. Again. He doesn't know. And so again, we're really, really proud of this product. We're going to be launching it soon. And, um, and we're going to be changing. So dogs are competing. You can't compete against us because our dogs will recover faster than any other dog out there. And that's just that. So, But the gift for life has been called the Fountain of Youth for Pets uh, by ABC News when they did a story on it because they saw what we did and how we do it. So it is like the Fountain of Youth for Pets. So if there is a Fountain of Youth out there, it would be a peptide. You there know you what go. I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, that's what we do that. And, of course, also the Genostem HDP right now with COVID's everywhere, right? Antimicrobial host defense peptides kill fungi, bacteria. Oh, yeah, if it touches a virus, it drills into the envelope of a virus and kills it. Go ask your Alexa about antimicrobial host defense peptides, most potent broad-spectrum antibiotic the body makes. And we boost it because we have HDPs and our peptide matrix. And I made that in a cherry flavor even for children with zinc and vitamin C. Hmm. Did I need it? No. But people can relate to zinc and vitamin C. And then I put 30 milligrams of the antimicrobial host defense peptides in there. So again, you know, we said that I was doing Pilates, you and I were speaking about that I came down with COVID finally because I was taking a private lesson. Now my instructor is on her back and can't get up and I'm in the backyard swimming 35 laps, riding my bike and walking max. Nothing happened to me because I was preparing my body for the virus and other diseases. Peptides, which you can find in the book, fight against cancer. Okay, I'm not worried about cancer because I'm preparing my body every day with peptides. I'm preparing my body every day to work out, preparing my body for sleep and recovery, and preparing my mind every day through peptides. So with peptides, you can prepare for disease and other functions that you're going to need, your immune system and stuff, by using peptides. So again, prepare yourself, train yourself, get ready for so you're prepared. So everyone else has COVID, they're on their back, lethargic and stuff like that. I'm not riding my bike. I mean, you got tested, you had it, and I you went and got tested. I didn't get you, the free test. I had to pay 120 bucks. <laughs> 120 smackers. And you didn't feel any symptoms. <laughs> Nothing. That's I, pretty I was incredible. Really lethargic one day, but I thought, oh my God, wait a minute. I was on the phone with Hong Kong last night for two hours in the middle of the night. So I took a nap and I went swimming. And I went and rode my bike. Wow. No fever, no congestion, nothing. I mean, it was just like, well, so I kept calling her. I said, I've seen you some peptides over. I'll send the HDPs and the genus stem. Start taking those. Get those antimicrobial host defense peptides in your system now. And she was back on her feet again in three days. Wow, that's amazing. Are your products sold other in other international markets as other than we, Hong Kong? You know, we sell basically in the Hong Kong. We sell sometimes in the in England and Canada um, when people start finding about peptides and stuff. But the problem is, is that, you know, people are finding about, what about this? And this is the next big thing. And this is the next big thing. But it's really sourced from the same source. And if you go look on the back of the supplement facts, it's still the same ingredients, just a different factors, different ways in here. And, you know, different milligrams. Yeah. So again, it's still the same product, but it's got a great advertisement campaign. We just specifically stay with peptides. We've done it for 20 years. And that's all we do because we live the life. We can't find anything that's better than the peptide technologies. You, know, you can go do anything you want to and come up with any formulas you want. At the end of the day, you're probably sourcing out of Hong, or excuse me, out of China, yeah. like Bully Brand, 
not really trying to put them down, but they're really big in the, in the pit bull market. But they're using whey protein. I'd rather use pure beef liver protein. And their whey is coming, I guarantee you, from Hong Kong, or excuse me, not Hong Kong, from China. This is where they're sourcing because that's where cheap supplements are. But are you testing it? Well, it can come with a certification. That doesn't mean anything. I've had Chinese companies call me all the time. I said, well, we'd have to retest everything that you sent me if I was ever interested in using any of your products. But I'm not because we source everything right here in America. Yeah. But thank you for reaching out to me. Um, so, again, you have to be careful. Don't believe it. Yeah, absolutely. While Solil, um, oh, he's saying we got to speak better into the mic. But okay. while he while he cues up uh, a couple of these videos for us to watch of rad dogs doing rad stuff. Sure. Um, the uh, are there things that people should be looking for when in in the supplements that they take for themselves, or that they that they're or are, is the packaging so misleading because there's of course it is. it's a sales pitch. But yeah. number one, number two, I don't believe you're vitamin deficient. That's another sales picture. If you're eating a normal diet, you're not vitamin deficient. And go invest in yourself. Go get a blood test. And you'll find out that you're not vitamin deficient. And stop taking that garbage. Because that's pretty much what it is. I wouldn't take a vitamin mineral if I had to. I look back as a little kid. They used to give me Flintstone vitamins as a little kid. And shoot, man, those things taste good. Yeah. But they were programming me and everyone else as I get older that we really need this. But you don't. By just eating a normal diet, God takes care of everything. You get all your nutrients that you need. The problem is as we're getting older and stuff like that, our peptide levels go down because our hormone levels start going down. So you can boost with peptides and increase your hormone levels. So your energy level, right? It, like it radiates off of you. I had a wellness guy, wellness uh, practitioner on last week, uh-huh. doc, uh, Dr. Blake York down in Deep Ellum. Awesome guy. He should connect you guys. He's really, I've really I've heard cool. of him. I've loved to meet him. Awesome guy. Yeah. And we talked a lot about cortisol. He said, Everything runs on energy. Yes. And so if you're depleted and you wake up in the morning, maybe you do have depressed thoughts because you don't have a natural source of energy. Your body's trying to catch up or whatever. Right, do right. You, do, you, uh, do you drink coffee? No. I do not so do caffeine. You don't do caffeine? No, you, it makes You limit evil. your sugar. <laughs> you have a little some cookies. Evil. Just, well, what I mean is caffeine with me, uh, I have a high energy level. This is just me. What you see is what you get. But you've been, on, you've been taking this for 20 years. 20 years, yeah. So you this, this what we're seeing, so your energy level. So you get natural the- energy, but it's not a stimulant. So I still have a youthful energy about me, I've been told. I don't say it arrogantly, but I don't do stimulants. And if I do, I, and every now and then, I, I love Campisi's Pizza. Who doesn't love our oh, famous Campisi's absolutely. Pizza here? And no, I don't know the guys and stuff like that. I'd say, hey, Corky or any of those guys. But still, I love Campisi's. And every now and then, I'll drink a half a Dr. Pepper. Um, because I, I think it's somewhere in the Bible. If you eat pizza, you must drink a Dr. Pepper. Yes. But I have to joke about that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but um, but even that just, it feels like needles. It's just, Is I that right? don't do well with caffeine. And I don't need it. And some people just run on it all the time. And of course, what's happening? You know, uh, adrenal failure. Look at the side effects of, of adrenal failure. So you're hitting those adrenal glands every day. So I tell people, I said, so you're drinking the coffee and stuff. I said, okay, so let's look about that. So you're drinking a cup of coffee, no big deal. So if I put like a five pound weight in your arm and I say, hey, do a curl for me, you're going to do it. No problem. Fantastic. Way to go. Now do a hundred of them. That's what coffee and these other things, these stimulants are doing. You can't finish and you should. Start, can't finish it this way. And this is where you have adrenal failure and all the side effects of that. Hair falling out, you can't sleep, uh, brain function, libido goes down. You start gaining weight in the belly area and stuff like that. And a lot of the guys out there also, I mean, if you look at me, I've got a flat stomach. Uh, I do train everything. But I, I tell the guys out there, I said, look, I, I'm looking at you and you have a little stomach that's protruded a little bit. And they go, yeah, Crockett, I do. I said, okay, that doesn't mean you're flabber ass, you're drinking beer all night. And, and having a horrible diet. That could be a sign of low testosterone. We can take care of that. Again, once you start taking the peptides, you start feeling better, you're moving, but we're also going to increase, what was that again? Testosterone, because testosterone is a peptide hormone. How come the low T centers and everybody else isn't talking about it? it's a peptide hormone? This is why they want me to come back on the ticket and start doing my commercials again and calling them out going, hey guys, why anybody told you this is a peptide hormone? It does this and this and this for me. If it does it for me, I believe it'll do the same thing for you. That's the only way I can get around saying what the peptides do. Peptides with type 2 diabetics? Oh, my gosh. I mean, we can't, you know, help people with type 2 diabetes. We kick it in the butt. 
That's awesome. Yeah, these peptides help you in a very short period of time. And right now, I mean, so many people have type 2 diabetes. They're overweight. They're not eating properly and stuff. Get on your peptides and see what we do with your cortisol levels and also your insulin levels because we have insulin growth factor 1 and 2. And let's talk about that growth factor for a second because that's the holy grail for weightlifters is IGF 1 and 2. So you have a product out there from Deer Antler Velvet. Yeah. And they're selling it for $118 a bottle. It's the biggest bunch, excuse my French, bullshit I've ever heard in my life. You can cuss all day oh, okay. on this show, right, brother. Yeah. It's really not my nature, too, but colorful <laughs> metaphors are great. Yeah. The Romans wrote about Paul the Apostle that he was a foul-mouthed, crook-nosed Jew. Yes. So and I let loose every now and I yeah. go, hey, I'm in good company. Paul was cool. <laughs> but anyway, insulin growth factor one, and how come they never talk about two? Oh, yeah, they can't produce it. We do because it comes from a peptide matrix. Insulin growth factor, which you know, for lean muscle mass, you and I both love it. It's great. It's awesome. But it ain't from deer antler velvet or anything else. It, it comes from a peptide. So, again, you're being lied to. Right now on Facebook, there's something out there, and they're talking about insulin growth factor one. All these comments are amazing. I got on there and made a comment that said it doesn't come from that, and now they block me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what's new? You know, but I say, hey, guys, it doesn't come from this. Go do your, go do your science and check it out. So there's so many lies, and it's all about making a sale. And then we don't get into all these other products or anything like that because this is what we do, and we change lives. I'm not going to – could I go out and make other products all day long with other sources? Absolutely. Am I going to? Hell no, because it's all about the peptide. If every cell in the body has a peptide and there's 40 peptide hormones, that's what you need to be focusing on, not all this garbage, synthetic vitamins and stuff like that. And have you noticed when you take these vitamins how your urine changes and the smell changes? Yeah. Even Dr. Cooper, the renowned Cooper Clinic, said, to me personally, Americans have the most expensive urine in the world because we're getting rid of it. But what else happens? Again, I relate back to the Bible where they used to have animal sacrifices. Burn the fat into a pleasant aroma unto me, but feast on the meat. The reason is the toxins of the animal are in the fat. God knew this. And he doesn't want us eating those toxins. So again, if you're out there taking all these vitamins and minerals and your body can't get rid of it, eliminate it through your urine and, and other processes, it's being stored in the fat of your body. Now you've got a petroleum product being stored in your body and you want to know why cancer is still going crazy? crazy, man. crazy. It's everywhere. Petroleum. So I'm sorry, I get really passionate and no. I get pissed off about this yeah. because they're, Don't you've, apologize. Been you've been lied to. And again, I'm sick. A lot of that going around oh, when it comes everywhere. to our health, isn't and again, there? And you know, today, as soon as we're off the air, where am I going? I'm going to the doctor's office to, you know, see the sonogram of my beautiful son. And yet I'm still looking forward to it. I'm going to be here till I'm 100 years old because we have proven that peptides increase the lifespan between 10 to 30 percent, where most people are dying at the age in their early 70s. And I just lost a friend at 63. Wow. So, again, if we can increase the lifespan with peptides, which is proven with lab mice, uh, animals, and human beings, why aren't we talking about peptides instead of all this garbage? Because we've been programmed because all these sales pitches are out there, you know, and so that's the bottom line. So you can keep living that life and living that lie, or you can decide to make a choice. You've taken the peptides. You've experienced it. And when people stop taking it, they go back and go, Crockett, oh my God, I felt like I hit a wall. And I go, what, no, what happened was is your endocrine system went back to the place it was before. It reverted. Yes, compared to getting a stimulation of peptides. And we talk on the cellular level, we really are because every cell in your body, again, has what? A peptide. Yeah, so, the building block. Yeah, the building block. Short Done amino to acids. your head, no options. You have to give an example or we're going to throw you off the roof. What's the most amazing transformative story you've gotten from a uh, pet owner or a human being that your um, product has helped out? Does one just come to mind, right? Just Well, yeah, I, I have to go uh, back to animals because remember, animals don't know placebo effect. Ah. All they know is that mom or dad just gave them a chewable treat. Remember, that's all human grade. I won't make anything that's not human grade. That's why those SWAT guys were taken. <laughs> That's what they were it's taking. Great. Yeah. Oh, man, it's hilarious. It's, it's an still awesome a great story. story. Yeah. It's a true story. You have to laugh about it. So Officer Brenda Martin, let's talk about her uh, canine officer out of Wiley. She's now retired. And you can find her video online also. Look up the gift for life, Officer Brenda Martin. So I was out there with all the... Uh, yeah, we'll look it up right yeah. now while you're, while you're telling yeah, the so story. I was out there with the police canines of Garland working with them at the pound over there. 
And so uh, she came up behind me. I never met the woman before in my life. And also I hear Crockett. And I turn around and I look and I look down and there she was. I went, yes, ma'am. She goes, are you full of crap? I went, no, ma'am. She goes, follow me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm laughing because I've had this little officer just bark at me, right? And I go back and there's this beautiful customized freaking truck, police uh, vehicle out there. And it's got Carlo on the side of it because this guy won a bunch of awards. Okay. And so anyway, so she clicks the button and the door opens and Carlo comes out. She goes, what do you see? Uh, I said, biomechanic, I see he's weak in the hind quarters. He goes, exactly. This is my partner. What are you going to do about it? And I said, well, if you give him the gift for life, I believe I can turn him back on again, but he's a working dog and he's also stabilizing himself every day as you ride around in that vehicle. She goes, right. I said, well, I would usually say, give me four days. Can you give me five with him? She goes, yeah, I will. But I can tell you right now, and it's in her video, <laughs> if you don't do what you say you're going to do, I'm going to call you out and tell everybody you're full of crap. It's going to put you on blast. Did oh. you find it, Salil? If you found it, we'll play it. Oh, yeah. Is she, she like, she's just like a little drill sergeant? Oh, she's a little drill sergeant. She's hilarious, man. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I get a call. Um, I get a call in three days. Yeah, I think you'll find it right there. But anyway, you'll find Officer Brenda Martin. I get a call in three days. And it's her. And I went, holy crap, it's three days. I said, hello, it's Lorston. She goes, Crockett. I said, yes, ma'am. She goes, Officer Brenda. I go, hey. She goes, okay, you're not full of crap. I'll see you Tuesday night. That's awesome. Yes, ma'am. And I hang up. I'm laughing. So what happened was is that Carlo is what she called a spinner. When he gets happy yeah. and he wants to eat, he spins. Well, the problem, he was so weak in the hindquarters, he was falling. And they were about to retire, Carlo. And a lot of these dogs are retired at the age of five or six. People don't understand that. Anyway, she comes back to her. She goes, watch this. She pops the door. He comes out. He starts spinning. He's strong. He's now high-stepping wow. instead of guarding his hindquarters. And we kept Carlo on the job till he was nine years old. That's an amazing story. Oh, yeah. Another story. Uh, uh, God, Dennis Hambright, a DA buddy of mine, called me up. His brother had a dog. He was limping pulling his hindquarters. The doctor says, we can't do anything. This is the best we can do. Uh, go home and spend as much time as you have left with him. And uh, Jack Russell Terrier. And in four days, that dog's running up and down the backyard. Wow. He is hooking butt, man. And and uh, so these are the stories I love so much because they don't know placebo effect. I couldn't get your dog to lie to you if I had to. Yeah. But we have a lot of other guys right there. So, man, I'm strong. No, that's I'm a very interesting again. way to look at it. Yeah. They don't know placebo. They yeah. don't know marketing. They just know. You gave them a treat. Performance. Yeah. Let's roll it if we've got it. I want to see this. This is such a cool story. Uh, I'm Brenda Martin, and I am a retired police officer. I was an officer for almost 21 years and was a canine officer for almost 15 years of that. There you I go. found out about the Gifts for Life uh, by Larson came out champ. to our training session uh, one Tuesday night um, when I was working with my first police canine and wanted to introduce himself and talk to us about the Gift for Life. At that point in time, I had a... Uh, German Shepherd that I was trying to think of how long he had been working at that point. He probably had been working with me for about four years and uh, was starting to have a little bit of problems with his hips, a little bit of achiness and everything. And Larson and office offered some of the gift for life for him and kind of told him that I thought he was full of crap. <laughs> <laughs> he thought that was funny. And uh, so he offered me some and he said, give it a try and see what you think. And he said, um, I told him, I said, okay, I'll give it a try, but if it doesn't work, I'm going to come back and tell you you're full of it. Um, he says, that'll work. So he gave me, he gave me some and he told me it'd take probably four to seven days for it to get in a system good and for me to start noticing any differences. Um, three days is when I noticed the difference. Uh, Carlo, my first dog, was uh, what I always called a spinner. And when he was happy and excited about things, he would spin in circles. And he had got to a point where he couldn't do that anymore. And so I had given him the gift for life for about three days and we'd come home from work and went to feed him. He went running out to his kennel ahead of me like he normally does and started spinning and waiting for his food all excited like he had in the past. So at three days, I could tell you that, that he had started working on him. 
That's a rave so review if I've ever heard. Him, man. You're absolutely That's right. Awesome. It does work. So Leo, should so, we should we uh, roll a couple of those uh, a couple of those videos that you found too? Because I know we got to get our man out the door for that excited. Oh get, yeah, I'm gonna go see my your, son. Right? You got to get you got to go see him. Yeah, man. You guys got to uh, come over to the uh, to the baby shower. Yeah. Right? While he's <laughs> queuing that up, so people want to reach out. What's the website? And then uh, can they eat? What what email can they hit you at as well? Well, it, for the human one, it's Genostim. That's G E N O S T I M dot com. You've heard that a million times. Like on your the license ticket. plate. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And of course, then the, the human, uh, the dog one is the gift for life. T H E G I F T F O R L I F E dot com. Or you can still buy all the products on on Genostim dot com too. But you can get more of the science on the gift for life uh, right there if you want to see more of the science yeah. and what we do and the graph of actually a dog, yeah. how the growth factor actually works. With and you dog. are such a great communicator, and you haven't met a stranger one time in your life. If somebody wants to reach out to you via email, what's the best email it's, for them to hit it's you? It's very simple. It's crockett at genostem.com. C-R-O-C-K-E-T-T at G-E-N-O-S-T-I-M.com. Just like Davey. And I will get back with you personally. And if you leave me your number, I will call you. This man has energy, folks. <laughs> Fire it off, uh, Salil. Uh, what do we have fun. here? This is a try not to laugh. I don't know if you've done this. How my dog, dog be lovers. when the treat bag's empty. Since we're all dog lovers. I don't know what this one is. I don't either. No laughing. Waiting for it to play. No smile. Oh. oh. The power of Christ compels you. <laughs> the animals are so amazing. They are. <laughs> oh, she got that bounce. They love to play that. <laughs> 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 you know, they're stuff like, such a gift to us. They are. They really are. Oh, that's Trying hilarious. Trying to give him some water like this, and he's like... He's like, nah. <laughs> oh, no. Close the fridge. That's Close a service it. dog there. Oh, Heck yeah. God. Which is the difference between a therapy dog. Max is a therapy dog. That's gotcha. a therapy dog. I have to bring Max on sometime. Yeah. When we kick off, when you kick off the next product, let's I'll bring him on. Time. We're going to change awesome. things and just, yeah. That's when we need more holy water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got cat food going on. Yeah. And gift for life uh, is is good for cats too. We have the cat version too, okay. right? We absolutely do. And the kitty awesome. cats love it. And uh, so yeah, it's anti aging, but it's, it's called the Fountain of Youth for Pets. I'm not really a cat off. guy, but a pet is a pet. Yeah, I've got two. Friend is two a friend. Cats, yeah. yeah. Charlie Tuxedo. This actually uh, sleeps. Charlie Tuxedo sleeps with me every night. He grows really? up. It's hilarious. That's his job. He thinks. And then Angel, she runs around the house and. And does her thing. And, of course, Max, he just puts up with everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. We got more craziness, Salil. We got any of those uh, those dock diving uh, competition ones? That's what we want to talk about. Because uh, it's new Canine Prime. The We're going to take Prime. that championship. We will take that championship. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the performance enhancement aspect for the for the competing and the working you can't dogs compete. Our seems dogs will awesome. recover faster. Yeah, the speaker's fucked. No worries. Yeah, it's cool. The, yeah, uh, our dogs will recover so much faster. You're not going to be able to compete with like us. the Russians. They're just going to be out there <laughs> exactly. just whooping Complete, tail, right? Yeah, literally it's natural whooping tail. Superfood, natural beef liver, American uh, grass fed liver with along with the peptides in a scoop. Give it to them as a treat while you're out hunting or whatever, or just put it on their food and make that food a superfood. Give them hey, a chance. Is it a misnomer? I know a lot of people. Th- this is counterintuitive to them. Um, if you don't have farmer's dog or nom nom on hand, uh-huh. but you got a can of tuna or you've got some raw beef or chop it up and throw it in there with the with carrots, the crack carrots, an egg over that. Yeah, throw and, a keg, an egg in there. I love the natural egg for all the nutrients I mean, and the minerals. This is how the protein. Wo- wolves aren't cooking Hunter that. Gatherers do, well, yeah, man. they're not cooking that elk liver before they consume it. They're no. just going. They're and dialing some, it and in. Some vets have said, "Well, you can get salmonella." I'm sorry. Come on, with man. the stomach of a dog, I yeah. have never seen one dog. And Max used to get an egg every day. The enzymes in those dogs' stomachs, no way, could, dude. They, yeah, they they uh, they could they could and take I, the dough off egg a penny. Man. Cost pennies. Oh yeah. Give it to your dog every day, and you can find naturally occurring growth factors in an egg. Amazing. 
So yeah, so eggs are so important. So that just turning the, the entire, reframing the entire thought process behind nutrition for our pets, right? Uh-huh. Just right. like we're reframing the entire thought process A about longer, nutrition for ourselves. Life. Fewer Amazing. vet visits because it's what you eat, you know, what you put in, what you get. Absolutely. Yeah. Here we go. Change that dynamic. Stop believing those big bags of kibble and give me your dog Don't, cereal every day. Yeah. Stop doing it. Don't let yourself be marketed to. add the to. chicken egg to it yeah. or add a gift for life to it and give them the peptides Start that they're Start small. Lacking. Yeah, it's very easy to do. Yeah, yeah. We're going to see some jumping here. I oh, love yeah. these, man. We are so excited to get into this competition. Yeah, wellness, I uh-uh, wouldn't give it to Max if I had to. Yeah, it's what just, a great sales pitch, guys. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, fancy packaging, oh, and yeah. everybody's susceptible to it. But it's not real food. Yeah, and, and they're not And facts. Max deserves it. Now, a lot of people can't. And Nom Nom is expensive. Right. Farmer's dog ain't cheap either. No. So let's add some other real food to that kibble to increase it. Like a raw egg, it costs you pennies to do. Yeah, a lot a of people real don't vegetables. realize that. They yeah. think, oh, no, just oh, Rocky. He's the only one who could drink raw raw eggs, right? Rocky, right. Sly Stallone again. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? But they're, it's amazing for dogs. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah, fire that one off. I want to see what, what what do we got going there. Yeah, and I've got it. There we go. so excited to get more competition are you going to be sponsoring different at athletes we are we're talking right okay. now a lot of people like i said you're the first person to find out about canine prime awesome and also about maxton being yeah, here too yeah, that's know? amazing i feel honored part. man yeah when uh when that kicks off let me know when do you plan for that to come out uh we are actually um doing it right now i did a video yesterday I was actually in the lab where i was breaking out all the kilos and putting them in there and doing the mixing and stuff so that product will be out in the next three weeks. Brother, I really appreciate your time. Absolutely. I know you're very excited to get to your next destination. I don't blame you. And I I'm looking my forward to baby. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward <laughs> to having you back on. We'll bring Max on and we'll we'll do it all again. Yeah, man. you'll love Max. And, and I hope you'll come over to our studios too. Absolutely. You know, we have our studios in-house. Love to, man. And I uh, would love to. It, it's been such a joy being with you. I really appreciate yeah. it. I like uh the energy, man. The energy. <laughs> I love energy. That's the, the coolest well, you're thing. You're a peptide guy too. I you am, understand, man. Yeah. you know. So um, gotta bring the juice, we, man. We, we gotta are bring the are, juice. But, but it's natural, and as long as we we can bless somebody, and uh, at the end of the day, it's been a good day. Absolutely, man. I so, appreciate you. Thank you. Have a blessed one. You too, brother. All right. That was awesome. I hope you liked that as much as I did. I sure love these podcasts. Hanging out with people who live a DIY type of lifestyle really gets me going. Loriston, or Crockett, as he likes to talk to him, to talk about himself as, has unbelievable energy. Check out his book, Peptides Are Life. You can grab that on Amazon anytime. Check out The Gift for Life at thegiftforlife.com or GenoStim. GenoStim Pro is what I take. It's amazing stuff. I think if you try it, just give yourself a month. I think you'd like that. But The Gift for Life, if you've got a pet and you love that pet, treat that pet the way that you would want to be treated. This will definitely help lengthen their life, give them more of a quality of life. I think you'll enjoy that. Um, Love to know what you think about the podcast. Drop a comment below. You can always hit me on Instagram at Jess from the Northwest. We'll talk to y'all later.